Learn Advanced Music Production with FL Studio in this course from Tristan Wilcox. Tristan is a professional music producer with over 10,000 hours in music production. In this course, you'll learn complex techniques that will transform your approach to creating music. Tristan covers everything from mastering plugins and sound design to understanding the subtle differences between being a music artist and a music producer. In my first FL Studio beginner tutorial, I taught you guys how to make your very first beginner track, and I didn't assume that you knew anything. I basically did the tutorial as if you had never heard of anything music production related and that you've never seen the software before. In this tutorial, I'm going to be assuming that you have made your own songs before, you have been using FL Studio. And if you're coming here for the first time and you do want to learn music production, but you don't know anything about it yet, I would highly su uh, suggest that you go watch some uh, good beginner tutorials. And I have made a very in-depth one that is also on this channel. So if you watch that one first, you'll be uh, greatly prepped for uh, this one once you want a more advanced in-depth look. With this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is it's going to go a little bit differently. Um, and rather than make a track, uh, because tracks that are, in my estimation, like advanced, I have put in 40 to 50 hours into any given track. And obviously that would be just a little bit too long for a full length YouTube production. And while I hope I could record that one day, I think the editing would be extremely tedious. So uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go over some it, the categories of advanced techniques that I think I could cover in a more realistic time frame, so that you guys can still get the benefits of having an advanced knowledge of music production without uh, the price tag of having to watch something that would actually take that that length. Um, something to know, and this is going to be the very first thing, so that even if you don't watch the rest of this tutorial, you at least get one of probably the most valuable tip you'll get. Um, or I'll, you know what, I'll give you two. You're lucky today. Um, the first one is that uh, you have to love the process of music production. If you don't like it, you're never going to be a truly advanced producer or an artist in my estimation. Um, my definition of an artist, um, I don't know what the actual definition is, I should probably look it up, but the one that I have written down here is that an artist is someone who can take a story, idea, or emotion and express it through sound. Um, and I know it sounds extremely basic, but the idea is that I have some idea or some pattern in my mind and I can like, I have it there and I want to get it from here to onto the screen. Like that's, that's what I want to do, or I guess into the headphones, not on the screen, but you, you get the point. And the software is just helping me accomplish that task. So that is what I think an artist is. A music producer, the difference between a music producer and an artist, a music producer just knows how to use the software, okay? And that's not anything too remarkable. Like anybody can learn anything with enough time and effort. Making music is a completely different thing. And I think that that's why I'm really happy. The first beginner tutorial, I decided to teach you guys how to make music because that's different than learning music production. You see what I'm saying? So that's one tip is that if you don't know the differences between music production and actually being a music artist, you might be trying to develop the wrong things. Uh, so for instance, like if you just think, oh, I just need to learn more of, about music production and then I'll be a better artist. I mean, you could be sending yourself on an infinite journey that you'll never finish because being a better artist is a completely different skill set than being a music producer. Um, it's about what the what can make you better at getting the ideas from your head on, into the program rather than learning more about the program. So yeah, that's, that's one thing. The second thing, and it does have to do with uh, loving the process, is that you want to constantly be asking yourself questions and like the, like the, what is it called? Um, just adding things. You're like, oh, this would sound cool if I did it like this. Or what if I use this like this? Or what if I use this in a way that's not supposed to be used? Or just if you're trying new things, you're trying to like, uh, you're always constantly, you could be, you're having fun. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. You're having fun while making music. If you're not having fun while you're making music, then if it's not enjoyable, I, it's going to be really hard to make something good out of it. And if, even if you do make something that's a good production, it may not really have an emotional connection with the listeners. So those are two things that I think that already will help you just speed up the process of you becoming an advanced producer. Because if you spend time working, developing skills that you don't need, obviously that's going to waste your time. So you want to be focused on exactly what you want. If you want to just do music production and you don't care too much about making your own music, then sure, learn the software to, as much as you possibly can. But if you're looking to become an artist, that's more the people I'm talking to because that's the practical use for why you'd want to learn to make music in the first place. So with that being said, uh, let's get into some more um, advanced music production techniques that can help you as an artist. So uh, first things first, I'm just going to show you guys um, something pretty cool. If I open up basically any plugin here, um, and by the way, I'm using all three plugins, so you guys can completely follow along with me. If I just open up Fidel, for instance, this is a great synthesizer. If you guys are familiar with Serum, this is a very similar synth, and it's completely free, and I think it's I think it's amazing. So if I just click on the plugin here and then just Control-L, this is a, I'd say this is an intermediate technique, but 
uh, if you click Control L, it automatically puts it on the mixer. As you can see, it names it for you and it colors it and puts it on the nearest mixer that isn't already taken. So, uh, and obviously the reason of why this is useful is, is immediately evident if you've ever used FL Studio for organizing, because what happens is, is you're like, okay, well, I have to go here and then I have to go to my channel rack and I have to put it on a mixer. And then I, once I get it on the mixer, I have to rename the mixer and you have to do all this stuff. But just doing control L, it does it all for you. So, I mean, obviously that's going to be faster, a lot more efficient. So right there, that's just going to help you keep track of where your instruments are and where they are in, in your mix. So just an organizational tip right there. Um, the second thing is, is that, um, and this is just uh, for all those people who wanted a sound design course, you're welcome. I'm going to go over the basics of sound design. Uh, because I didn't do that in my beginner course, and I think that a lot of you were interested in that. So uh, let's focus on the basic principles that will underlie basically all music production uh, sound design. Your attack, delay, sustain, and release. Okay. Now attack, uh, basically this is, think of this as a volume over time. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, for example, why don't we just play the note and see what happens? You can see that we can follow this line and see what's going on. So the it's almost like a graph. So the higher on the graph, the more volume, the lower on the graph, the less volume. Further to the left is closest to us in time. And then further to the right would be in the future. So you can see what, what's happening over time to the, the volume of the sound. So what attack is going to do, you can almost visualize it in your head, but also explain it can help. Uh, you can see that it's going to start off lower volume, go up in high volume, and then come back down. Okay. So that's what attack does decay. You can see how it affects the tail of the sound. You can see the sustain is going to, you might be like, what, what does this do? Uh, let's see. Okay. So if you hold the note, the sustain actually will hold it at this volume and will never go lower than the, than the, whatever the sustain is at, it'll hold it at that volume until you let go of the note. When you let go of the note, the tail at the end, this little release, that's what happens after I let go of the note, the rest of it that plays is your release. So what this is typically called is your ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And sometimes you have some extra ones like hold. Hold is an extra one that's not on all synthesizers, but it is on some. And then delay, which is uh, your more fancy synthesizers will have this, not all of them do. Um, and obviously you can see kind of based off of what it did to the visual, you can tell what it would do like sound wise. But if you can just know this, you can make all kinds of sounds. So first of all, I can make plucks. Or I guess chords. Uh, if I want to move the attack down, I can make more plucks. If I wanted more of a chord, I could add a little bit of attack and then maybe a little bit more decay. If I wanted to add a more supersage thing, you could have it ha have high sustain. So there's lots of options here. Um, and depending on which genre you're making, it's going to affect the ADSR of the sounds that you're actually using. So for instance, Synthwave, they have like very long release, a very long or a very high sustain and kind of hard attack. So it's like a very lengthy drawn out stuff. Also, I don't know music theory, so don't judge my piano playing skills. Um, so basically that's, that's the fundamental, that's the most fundamental sound production I can give you. The second part is we have our, uh, oscillator. So our oscillator is going to be what wavetable it's playing over and over and over again. So um, if you click the 2D and 3D, you can see the different views of the oscillator. So I have this, let's go to a different one so I can show you guys really what's going on here. So that's the 3D view. I mean, that's the 2D. This is the 3D view. It's scrolling through the, through the thing. And then this is the uh, side view. It's pretty cool. It, it kind of shows you what is happening to the wavetable as you scroll through it. And just scrolling through it, I just left click and drag up and down, or you can drag this now. So uh, let's just do some basic sound design things. So this, let's make a <clears throat> more of a synth wave-ish, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's make more of a synth wave-ish uh, type thing. So let's use this wavetable because it looks pretty cool. And I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna drag this envelope. You see, this is envelope one, the one that we're working on. If I go to a different tab, it's gonna change. So let's select envelope one, drag it onto <clears throat> this uh the thing that was changing the wavetable okay so now what happens it's pretty interesting so it's actually taking the input of this and applying it to this um what's it called this um knob so you can do this all and by changing this knob right here it changes the way You can see how I'm using the 
it, the attack uh okay hold on let me say this correctly the envelope of this is show is working on this knob in the exact same pattern okay and it's basically changing the uh, the, the wavetable so it's it's one of those things that like more of like after you do things a lot, you kind of know what they do and what you're trying to accomplish, but it's harder to explain like in words what's going on. And honestly, I think that the wordy definitions aren't the most useful things in music production anyways. It's just like, hey, here's this technique. You can use this and learn it. So uh, without over explaining everything, uh, another thing you can do is if you turn this knob the opposite direction, and this works in a lot of these type of plugins, uh, is it'll actually go the opposite way. So. Okay, so we have some cool there. I'm gonna turn up the unison. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna play the same, uh, the same wavetable multiple times at different, uh, slightly different panning and slightly different uh, pitches. And by dragging down the detune, it's dragging down the panning and the, uh, the tuning of the separate wavetables to be closer together, uh, less detuned and less further right and left. So we have something like that. So right off the bat, we just have one, one, uh, what is it called? Wave table playing with a, just a little, just one envelope. Okay. Now you can see how you get so complicated with music production because you could add another, uh, w another wave table here. You could add another oscillator playing a different wave table and that could have its own envelope. So I could have this, have a completely different envelope, put that on maybe the, the volume. <laughs> You can see just by using different envelopes and different things, you can come up with completely, uh, really interesting, uh, like sounds just by adding multiple oscillators and multiple, uh, envelopes. And you don't need to get that complicated. Uh, you can make really good sounds just with one, just like I was showing you before. So even just with this, uh, we're just in the oscillator section right here of vital. And there's lots of things you can work with this. There's filters and these filters you can also automate with the envelope so like basically just think of this you can drag this envelope anywhere you can drag a lot of these knobs like all over the place and just be automating and changing everything over time and do some crazy stuff and you might be extremely overwhelmed but the fun part is it's all just experimenting and seeing what stuff does and what sounds good and then over time just by messing around and having that spirit of I want to see what this does and it might break my project over and over again you'll start to very slowly see the connections between different plugins and see the see the patterns in them so i don't think it's really helpful for me to go through every what every single thing in this plugin does but rather give you the principles that allow you to go through many different plugins and understand the basics of each of them so the first uh principle that we went over was attack decay sustain and release uh the second that we went through was the idea of wavetables that change over time um uh, obviously our basic unison and uh detune and then we have pitch which is pretty self-explanatory it's just gonna change the pick uh pitch up a note and then this is like the fine tuning of pitch and then uh, our level, which is just going to be the amplitude of the of the signal. Uh, I showed you that we can add in different uh, oscillators and wavetables that you can even apply filters before it goes to the effects. And last but not least, I guess I'll show you the voices over here. So in the bottom right hand corner, uh, as you can see, you can change the amount of voices that are playing. So if I or I mean that are allowed to play. So if I just play one and I try playing another note, it's going to switch to that note and it won't let me play chords anymore because the max amount of voices I'm allowing is one, which means that it's going to be just a lead instrument. You might say, Tristan, why would you want to do this? Well, suppose I want to have my notes slide between each other. I could turn up the glide and I could turn up the slope a little bit just to affect the way it glides. I can maybe hit legato. And now when I have just my one note and I play them to get, uh, play another note, I could have a completely different style of sound just because I'm limiting it to one voice. So it has to slide between the notes. Uh, like, and that's just an interesting thing that you could do. And maybe you want to turn this off and then you don't want to glide and you want to turn up the voices and then you have chords. So just different ways of working. So, or it depends on what you want. Um, macros, uh, this is important. So a macro, you can control a bunch of different things and then have it all one knob controlling all of this. So this knob doesn't do anything on its own, but it allows you to control many effects at the same time. So let's say if I want to change uh, a bunch, like if I have one type of sound, but then if I turn this macro up, it affects a bunch of these knobs. You could create a second version of that sound just uh, based on how high this is up or down. 
Um, next advanced thing that you you can know is you any knob that you turn in almost any plugin in FL Studio, even third party plugins, can be automated. So if I turn this macro up and down and then go to this knob up here and click right click, you'll see that it says create automation clip. If I just click that, it'll create an automation clip. And then literally, if I just drag this up and down and we go back and we play this over and over and then go back to vital, you'll see it's it's actually moving the macro in my uh, plugin based off of this automation. And I and it works in real time. I hold on, I need to put this to detach so I can show you guys. So that is like just so cool. It, it works so fast and you like can do things on the fly like as it's happening. It's so helpful to do this kind of stuff. So, uh, and automations are huge. So you think that um, maybe you don't want something to be changed within the plugin itself. You can actually change it through automations out here. And that could essentially act as, yeah, like a separate controller for it uh, outside of your uh, VST. And that, that could be super helpful. So like if you're making a song and I want the volume of the instrument to be low, on maybe the sine wave here, I have it really low in the beginning of the song, but as the song progresses, I have this turning up over time. Just some things to think about, just some ideas I can give you. Um, so this is only the first section of the plugin and I didn't even go through all of it. I didn't go through LFOs. LFOs are pretty cool. I guess I'll show you those really fast. So this is affecting the volume, but it loops over and over again. So if I turn the frequency up, you can see uh, kind of what's happening. It's basically going through the playing. It's like an envelope right here. It's like the same ADSR thing, but then imagine that it restarts and plays it again after it gets to the end. And then we can change the different uh, mode. Uh, excuse me, change the different modes. So if I go to like sync. Oh, maybe it's not sync, hold on. Uh, oh, my bad, I'm being silly. It's, um, it would be, you could do some clever things like that where uh it the way that it loops is differently so sometimes you can loop it based off of the the grid that you have in fl studio so it will loop like uh one beat uh one step like and then like you know just i, I don't know what the names are for it but then this would go based off of time so it could actually be off beat with the song so many cool things you could do here um if you ever want to take something off though uh all you have to do is right click and click disconnect from LFO one, or you can uh, go to the LFO that is connected to it and you disconnect from oscillator one. And it will give you a list of all things that things are connected to so that you can like disconnect things from where they're connected to. Um, and this is also a bunch of, uh, these are also really cool. This has to do with like wh how you're playing like on your piano. Uh, this will affect like the, the, the notes and stuff. The, there's so many cool things in this plugin. I, I could spend so much time on all this stuff, but we're just, I want to keep moving too because there's just so much to cover. Okay uh effects so with effects uh this is basically think of this you have your your wave table uh your oscillator playing a wave table it's uh going through the envelope it might be going through a few filters that signal is going to move on and go to this next section called effects and then whatever you do in here is applied after this section right here so these go like in succession so now you have i can add chorus and it'll apply to that sound we had from before Oh, my bad. The level's off. That's why. Because we had the LFO and it was controlling the volume, so now I have to turn this back up. Um, just for sake of uh, you guys not listening to my piano playing, uh, let's uh, put in a MIDI, uh, MIDI from one of my MIDI packs. So just let you guys have something to listen to that's not completely terrible. Let's play something that's a little bit more drawn out. Okay, this is cool. So we'll play this, we'll turn the attack down just slightly, and then we'll start uh, just, you know, like making some cool ideas. So what we'll do is I'll add maybe just a tad bit of the distortion, just a little bit, and this will just add just a little crispiness. Not that much. Just ever so slightly. I just want it to sound like it's kind of like beaten up a little bit. And then we'll add a little post filter to that distortion. And what that'll do is it'll just cut any high.
we got some really like epic synth wave action going on. So we have, uh, let me just go through each one of these. So we have filter. Uh, this is just the same thing as what this does, but it's just a, you're a separate thing, I guess. It's just, if you don't want to use the distortion, you can just use this filter. Um, EQ, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just your standard EQ that, you know, just does, does the thing. Um, it, I feel like, okay. Uh, let me just say this right off the bat. I, it might sound like I'm going too fast, but if you are a beginner watching this, obviously none of this will make any sense. But if you're an advanced, or if you're w looking to become an advanced producer and you're an intermediate stage, then you should know what an EQ is by now. So I don't, I shouldn't have to explain it. If you don't know what an EQ is, then you probably should spend more time on the beginner tutorial and maybe make a few of your own songs, and eventually you figure out what an EQ is, and then you come back. Anyways, <laughs> so I just don't want to be too boring for people who already know what this stuff is, because I know that if I explained literally everything, like I thought ADSR was a little bit too slow for uh, explaining, but hopefully that's helpful for some of you. Okay, Flanger. Uh, I can't tell you what this does, but it does a thing. <laughs> to me, a Flanger and a Phaser feel like they're doing the same thing with different uh what would it be called like different sound it's different sounds of the same thing that's kind of my take i it even looks like they're doing the same thing i'm not sure what they're doing uh i think it has something to do with the phase uh don't ask it's something pretty complicated but all i know is it can sound cool but sometimes it really messes up your master so a uh, lots of uh, producers producers will avoid using a flanger and a phaser because they don't want it to affect their mix too much um reverb uh very cool the reverb this is so it's, it's all right. It's not bad. I mean, the reverb isn't anything insane, like maybe Valhalla Supermassive or something. Uh, we could add that or Convolver or my favorite ROM. ROM is the best reverb. Uh, it was free. I don't know if it's free anymore. I got it when it was free. It was on some promotion. Uh, this is a fantastic reverb. If you were looking for a good reverb and you're, I think, I don't know if it's like 40, 50 bucks, this is completely worth it. Uh, and I, listen, there, there are some plugins that I'm like, okay, there are, it's hard to come by good reverbs. Let me just say that. Like, so this is, this is a good reverb. Like if you're looking for a good reverb highly recommend this one it just sounds so good oh my goodness okay anyways i'm gonna stop gawking at uh the rom uh so uh different effects what did i miss compressor of course this is a ott uh is the same thing as this so if you if you guys are familiar i need to turn off the hash this is annoying me okay if you guys have used ott uh, it's just this plugin right here. This is so popular, uh, OTT. It's a, it's a up and down compressor. So a downwards compressor, um, basically imagine you have like a line, okay. And a compressor as you bring down that line and then whatever the, what's it called? Like the waveform, if it went above that line, it would just squash it under that line and compress that sound. Now, the what happens with a upwards compressor is it does the exact opposite and i love upwards compression what it does is i have a line and let's say my uh i have like a waveform whatever doesn't go to that line it's going to get lifted up to that line that's the way i understand it so it lifts up the low points and a compressor uh does the opposite or downwards compressor does the opposite it brings the high points down uh so that's the difference i yeah, I can't completely tell you if that's correct, but I'm like 90% sure that that's like about what's going on on a very basic level. By the way, if you're wondering, I think OTT sounds better than the OTT in Vital. I'm sorry, I don't know why, but uh, this OTT is, it's, it's, it's all right, it's, it's pretty good. It still sounds better with it, I think. So I pretty much went over the basics of sound design, and I would say that this get, got a little bit into the advanced ter territory, uh, not not quite there. But the thing is, is that I taught you how to become advanced at sound uh, sound design, and that's by looking at different plugins and seeing which things carry over between them, and then experimenting the heck out of everything. 
And if you really want a advanced uh, tip is to go to your master and then just spend time sound designing and just messing around while you have an Edison on your master and just click the record button right here. And then what I'll do is I'll go back into my uh, thing and I'll just mess around. <laughs> Okay, so like let's say you have something like that and you're like i don't know what you just did uh don't worry so i have this right here i go back to my uh playlist i can go to my edison and as i was recording that i can actually click this button and it's going to put exactly what we just recorded into my track <laughs> So then maybe I want uh, that to be some like weird uh, starting thing that I have that's just like the beginning of a track and then I stretch it a little bit and I make it some background element with reverb and I click control L and I add that and I put some like huge reverb on it and then I, I don't know, do something like this, this, and then I pitch that down. <laughs> And then maybe I add some like crazy gross beat thing to it where it like has some crazy. Or maybe I pitch it up. So as you can see, you can do so much from just messing around in your synthesizer, recording with Edison on your master, and it will record all crazy things that happen in your synthesizer. So if you miss something, you're like, oh, that sounded really cool. And you still have it recorded in Edison, and you can use that later as samples uh, for, your, for your music. Obviously, this is like a really random, weird example. I probably never use this in a, in a song, but it's still interesting, and you can still mess around like that. And I know I went really fast with that. I'm going to show you guys more about sampling uh, later. Right now, we're just focused on the sound design aspect. So... Also, I don't know why that got applied to my master. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, right here, I showed you guys pretty much, I think, everything I want to do. And I the reason I did sound design with Vital is because I think right now, Vital is probably one of the best, if not the best, free synthesizer, in my opinion. I've been using it a ton. It's a huge... I, lo I love this. I love this plugin. That's all I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, Matrix. Okay, so the Matrix is a little bit more... I don't... I would say more complicated to me than it is in Serum, but uh, it's, still, it's still cool. Uh, I don't really use the Matrix all the time. I used it a ton in, in Serum. I haven't, if I'm being completely honest, I just haven't found myself needing it yet in Vital, but I know that it's a huge, what is it called? Uh, like a huge benefit if you're doing some complex sound design. Uh, the Matrix is going to allow you to more finely tune basically everything in. So like, let's say you have all the UI and it's kind of all spread out between these knobs and it can be hard to see like what's going on. Uh, a matrix, it kind of just simplifies it down to like basically inputs and outputs in very like uh, almost like a pro programmer like language of how you use this. Uh, I don't use this too much. I used to in Serum, but with this, I haven't spent the time to learn it. So I don't want to teach you guys something that I don't feel a hundred percent comfort, comfort, confident in, but just know that uh, th there are good resources for the matrix and I don't use it that much. And you don't need it to make it good sounds. All right. With that said, uh, the ad advanced, again, I have not really uh, messed with this at, at all. So the matrix and advanced, you don't even really need to make really good sounds in vital. Uh, they're just extra things if you want to learn them. So there you go. And just with these basics that I've taught you, you can pretty much make uh, any sound that you can imagine in your head, like, or <laughs> any, any sound you can imagine in your head, any sound that you've any sound that you've heard in another song, unless it's some super complicated dubstep sound, like you'll probably be able to re remake that sound really easily just by knowing knowing these few basic things. So with that being said, I think that uh, we're going to go to the next chapter and sound design. This is my sound design um, part for this chapter. And let's go to the next one. From here, I also wanted to show you guys uh, more in-depth sound design that I've actually used in real songs that I've uh, released on Spotify. And I also would like to go over some layering techniques, some automation techniques. And I just thought, okay, you know, it'd be way easier uh, than just showing you guys each of these things individually. It's just to go to a track I've already made and then show you guys uh, how I used it in that particular track. So right here, I have a track I've made and I actually used um, the uh, Nitro pack that I added for free. To my sample pack uh, on my on my website. So uh, a lot of these uh, samples I'm using, a lot of these presets uh, I used, and you can get them too, and use the exact same ones that I used uh, in my sample pack on my website. Um, also, uh, I go over the exactly how I made this track 
a completely in depth on my YouTube channel where I also release uh, tutorials as well. And that's just under my name, Tristan Wilcox, as uh, just so you guys can uh, follow if you're interested. So without further ado, I'm going to play what this sounds like. And then we can go over exactly how I sound design some of the things you can kind of get a snippet of uh, some more in depth sound design for actual songs that I've used it for. And we can talk about what I did. <laughs> So I released this as part of a challenge to make a song in one hour to see uh, what I can make. And this is actually what I made. So I would like to go over a little bit of this because I think it's really cool how you can see the advanced uh, production just condensed as like quickly as possible. So I'm, I'm going to be doing one more hour challenges and I'm going to release the full things. And I think that this will also be a really helpful way, way for you guys to get to see advanced production in action because you'll see what things I think make a song sound really good in the fastest amount of times so you kind of see the whole process like compressed and then over a 40 hour period of some like really long advanced course it would basically be that process but just like lengthened and added more time to it so i could just fill out the song and do a lot more stuff so with that being said uh let's go and see the sound design of the lead i think that that's really er late leader bass first let's do this. let's do the bass okay so i have the bass here So as you can see, uh, I actually, the pattern here is hugely important to the way the sound, uh, sound design of the bass is made. I have very short notes and then I have uh, ones that go up an octave that help the lead or the bass feel nice and bouncy. So this melody would be completely ruined if I were to change the way my bass was and made it like completely sustained, for instance. That actually sounds really cool. Never mind. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, so regardless, uh, let's go over uh, how this bass works. So this bass uh, basically has a wavetable that changes using this envelope. Um, let's see what that sounds like. And that's literally all that's going on with this oscillator. Uh, in the effects section, I added a tiny bit of chorus, a lot of distortion. I took out the highs and I added a compressor. So really not too much going on. So you might be thinking, how does this sound so much better uh, with um, the, with the sound, with it being so simple. Because if you copied exactly what I just did, it would not sound anything near what the final sounds like. And that's because of two things. One being that on my bass, I have, uh, let me drag this so you guys can see it. Uh, I actually, here, let's do this, um, just make sure it's in view. Um, I have uh, different things going on on the bass effect rack. So I have a overdrive, which is just adding a tiny bit of distortion. I have an EQ, which is affecting the way the balance of the sound is. I have a sound goodizer, which, uh, yeah, you can make fun of me now. Uh, I love using sound goodizer. I don't know why. It makes it sound good. And I know a lot of people say it's terrible for your songs, but I digress. It sounds good. Um, so that's it. That's all I added. And it just really beefs up the sound. Uh, so that's really all that's going on with the bass. Um, I know it sounds cool, but there's not too much going on. I just had a little bit of distortion, a little bit of compression, EQ here and there, and then just try to keep it simple. And I mean, the end result, I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, I just added a couple other presets here, as you can see. And one of them was uh, one octave up, just to add a little bit more a uh, mid-bass feel to the sound. So I have actually three oscillators. You can almost think of it as layering three separate bases, which is part of sound design is layering. So uh, this you could think of this uh, preset as having three different layers, if you if you will. <laughs> And then I just uh, change the levels of this to get the desired sound I want. If I were to change this, it could change dramatically. So, and you can see just just by changing those around, it can really affect the the sound. Uh, next, I have the lead sound.
Now, the, the reason that this one sounds so quiet is because of the different automations. When everything's, uh, when all the automations are turned on, this lead is a lot louder, but we can still listen to it. So <laughs> look at how many times I play the same note in a row. One, two, three. I'm going to count that four, even though there's a slide. Five, six. Yeah, six times. So six times in a row, I get away with playing the exact same note. So your melodies do not have to go up and down like crazy to create a really uh, cool melody, in my opinion. Uh, you don't need to make them super complicated. Just make it easier for the ear to follow and catchy. And this works because I have a cool bass pattern going, and then it's just going to play the same lead. And with the drums, it just kind of hits at the same time. So it's like, oh, what's going to happen? Because you hear, like, let me just show you. So like like three times you hear it hit, and you're like waiting for something to happen. It's like, all right, let's, let's just turn on everything here. It's like almost like you think it might you think the melody might start then the second time, but then nothing happens. The third time, nothing happens, and then the same thing goes. Yeah, I'm like uh, just pushing your expectations just a little bit further, and you're like, uh, and then and then it's cool because I removed all the drums here, and then it, it, they came back in. So you can see how like my entire production is revolving around like I, I just made a heart, uh, revolving around what I think would be essentially like cool. Like I'm like, okay, well, if I'm playing the same three notes right here, I'll remove all the drums to build up like anticipation for when my melody does start. Um, if I was just a music producer and I wasn't an artist, I would just be like, like, I, I would never think, uh, I would, I would never think of that. I, would, I might just put the drums all the way across cause that's like a normal thing to do. And it might just sound like that. I'm pretty boring. Like, <laughs> it doesn't have the same feel uh in my opinion so that's that's one thing is that like you're influencing your decisions and your production techniques based off of what idea you have and so that's the key thing to being an artist is that you're actually the process of the music production changes based off of what you're trying to accomplish and so if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have that, like, okay, so when you start off, you might not have an exact idea for what you want to make, you just start making something, but then an idea that you kind of realize that there was a reason behind all the actions that you were doing and all the choices you were making. And you can, if you can kind of like hold on to that, then you can like make the whole song around that idea. It's, I know this sounds so complicated, but it's really just like a, an experience that you have to have making music. And I have shared this experience with so many different people who make music. They know exactly what I'm talking about. There's something that you can kind of like feel and you're like, yeah, this is the direction I need to go. And then once you can kind of hold on to that and like make the whole song around it, that's really when you're uh, making, doing like doing art. It's not just like, uh, the difference is that if you're just kind of making music and doing stuff and you're not feeling anything and there's no idea that's like kind of pulling you to, to make certain production decisions, then I don't think that you're really making music, if that makes sense. Like there's a, there's a, a huge difference between those two. Uh, and I know I've already mentioned this like four times, but I just really want to drive it home that point because it's so important. Uh, but anyways, I digress again. So let's listen to some of the cooler things I did with my drums here. So I showed you, oh wait, I didn't show you my lead sound design. My bad guys. Okay. So, uh, lead is not too complicated. I just have, uh, it's almost the same as my bass. I think I took my bass preset and literally just pitched it up. I'm not even kidding. And then I think I changed the wavetable. That was it. Uh, so this is actually the same as my bass. So I literally did the exact same thing. I might've just changed the envelope a little bit. And that was the only difference I made. And then for the second lead, I just changed it. So the A part of my melody has, has one, has one sound as you can hear. This is the A. So this is like the A part of my melody and this is the B part with a different sound. And again, we can distinguish the A and the B parts of my melody based off of the rhythm that they're playing. So technically this is like A, B, C, C, okay? And the A and the B are kind of using the same the same melody or the same sound, okay? To introduce the, the next part. And so I actually, I kind of belabor the point of my, of my melody by changing the instrument when it changes the rhythm and changes uh, melodies is I, I want to kind of emphasize that change by changing the sound. So if I use the same sound the whole way through, I feel like this would be incredibly boring. So like I can, I can show you what that sound like. Uh, it would sound like this. So it's not like this. It's like... I mean, it's still cool. I, I'm not even gonna lie, it is kind of cool, but it's just not the same. It, it sounds cooler when it changes here. I, I also noticed that it also sounded cooler when I changed it because I forgot that my automations changed and at the end of the automation, it actually shifted the sound entirely. So this actually would have worked anyways uh, and got the same thing. I just did it differently here. 
Anyways, uh, you probably are wondering about this sound right here. And if you were just watching my sound design section, you would have saw exactly how I did this technique. And if you are really clever, you might have actually known how I made this sound. So if I go into my piano roll and open up Vital, you can see that I actually have this insane all the way up. I don't know why it's so short. That doesn't really matter though. Uh, and I have an LFO, which has my frequency on seconds. So it does that exact, that, that thing I was talking about where it goes like, and then it like lengthens out. You saw me messing around with that. It's doing that with Vital. So hold on, let me go to attached view. Sorry, I know this is like so messy here. I'm trying to get it organized so that you guys can see what's going on. Oh, uh, let's just close everything and then reopen it back up. Okay, okay, let's go here. So you see, you see what's changing down in this LFO? That's that's what's going on, and I'm automating that uh, LFO with a automation here. You can see I'm the LFO frequency going down here. So as it goes down, it increases in seconds. So that is what I'm doing. So I just want to show you a real life example of me automating a knob in Vital in my song to make an effect that I was trying to get. Uh, anyways, okay. So uh, I'm gonna take this off to attach because I can't see it. <laughs> Uh, let's go to my drums. So now that I showed you guys the leads and the basses, it's so simple. I literally just had one uh, synth for each, and then I just processed the, the lead, and the lead processing was so simple. What I did was I basically actually used my my bass, what's it called, my bass uh, uh, insert as a uh, bus for my lead and my bass. And you might be going, like, what in the world? You put your lead into your bass. I did, and it and it kind of works, so I'm not even gonna lie. I think the reason it works is because the compression of the lead and the bass go together before it gets recompressed on the master, and that's why it's so like uh, kind of loud and it just works. So for my lead preset, I literally just have fresh air, which uh, kind of increases the highs and gives it a little bit more crispiness. Um, I have crush automations, which are just bit crush, and those turn on and off throughout the song and kind of highlight different parts of the melody with bit crush. And I have another kilohertz for bit crush. All these are free plugins, by the way. Delay, very cool. I don't think I ended up using this, but it is a very cool plugin. And then I just cut out some of the lows. So it left some room for the bass and then it boosted the highs again. So that's what I did. And then on my lead, I also always make sure to add white noise. So the reason I do this is because it fills up all that high end. So I pitch the white noise up to 48 uh, and then I just have it hit on, it depends on how you want it, but I kind of automate it so that the white noise gives it more crispy like snap. Because if I take this out and play it, see how lame that sounds? But then when I add white noise, has so much more energy it's like it's like not even comparable so if you're not using white noise you're really shooting yourself in the foot in terms of like energy for these type of music uh and obviously you may not be making this type of music but still white noise is, is huge so let's play the drums and just listen to what this sounds like first of all i am complimenting my kick drum by having uh these claps and ride so And then this is an example of just percussion uh, that I added in. I'm like, oh, it sounds cool. And th this is literally me. This is the process of advanced production. I'm going here and going, oh, but what happened if I took this this symbol and like shrunk it down like to a fourth of its size? Just played it over and over and over again right here. So it's like, and then I increase the volume of these very slowly. So it's like, and then that's literally what I'm doing. I'm just like sitting here, like I'm minutely changing these things to make something that sounds cool. That's like that's advanced production. A beginner, they just would like pull a sample. And this is nothing wrong with this. I do this all the time. Sometimes it's actually better. Like you'll see over in the beginning of my song, I did, I just literally pulled the cinematics hip hop drum loop because I was like, oh, this sounds good. And that's fine. But I also know how to make drum loops too. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing. Like I just did it because it sounded good. And that's the end quality that I wanted, but I, I'm also capable. And this is, I think the thing, you don't want to be using tools that take away from the skill that you don't have. So you should be able to do pretty much everything on your own and then just use the tools as complementary things that aren't, holding up your production but are like helping you do things that you already know how to do but just uh saving you time or uh improving your creative work so yeah whoops uh so i also took the kick and reversed it so it kind of like sucks it back in the kick right here. You do that. and then if i 
So that just keeps it interesting. Just like little tidbits here and there. And these, this is just the type, type of stuff that happens when you're like working for long times on tracks. I mean, this one obviously was an hour, so I didn't have a ton of time, but uh, it was uh, quite fun to add all this stuff in. So I'm trying to think what else I can show you guys. So I uh, added auto obviously automations here and there to exemplify different parts of the melody, the A and B parts uh, by automating different aspects of the, of the sound. And I also have reverb automations that go in between the notes so that uh, the reverb plays when there's no note playing. So it kind of fills that space a little bit. And then I always make sure that I have a little bit of a background noise going in the background so that you can, uh, it fills up those empty gaps and doesn't make the song sound so dry. So like if I take this out. You can see the difference is absolutely massive. So. And there was other parts I took out. So some things I mute because I'm like, I, I didn't like the way that turned out. So like, I, I guess I had this. I don't know what this was. So I said, okay, I don't like that. So I took it out. So you can mute ideas over time too. And some things that don't fit and that's perfectly fine. So that's just part of the process. Um, I don't know how much more I have to show you guys, I guess, other than maybe this 808 was like really cool. Uh, it sounded pretty interesting. So like if I go to the beginning of the track here. just took the same bass and just automated different things to make it fit uh it's just like your standard 808 sound i thought it's i thought it was really cool and i kind of reuse things to make uh make it go faster so i reuse this bass uh from the drop as my 808 in this part uh the hip-hop song uh so that's kind of what i did um I'm trying to think what else to show you guys. Uh, I use delay to have a cool uh, intro effect here. So that's why it sounds like it's repeating itself over and over. Okay, you hear that? Like, let me turn it off and you'll you'll hear the difference in like what goes on when I turn that off. Uh, okay, let's play it now. Here, there's like no repeating and then like let me turn the this delay back on you'll see the, the effect it had i think it, it was huge i think that this really made you see how cool that is i i love that delay effect i had a friend show it to me and i've been using it like ever since um i had this really cool thing i do in the uh, in the beginning of all my songs with convolver so if you want to steal my signature artist thing that i do go for it uh so basically this is what it sounds like I have a convolver on the master, and right here, what this does is it basically, I put the preset on big size, and then I automate it from 100% to zero, and if I turn like the pink noise all the way up in any part of the song, you'll hear what it does. It like just washes everything out. It sounds so cool and so epic. Uh, I love like doing that to like kind of introduce a new part of the song. So uh, I showed you guys about layering. I showed you guys about layering different sounds. Uh, the one thing I didn't describe to you guys is that uh, each sound that I picked in this particular track, I had a specific place for it. So I picked the three different um, oscillators in my bass because I wanted a mid bass, I wanted a, sine, a sub bass, and I wanted a another low bass. So that's why I picked three different sine waves and they're all serving a different purpose. Then I picked my lead and I picked it and I'm like, okay, the lead will go in the higher uh, range. So that's why I cut the low or the highs out of the bass so that the highs for my lead would fit there. And you can kind of see my, my head working. Like I'm like, okay, I don't want the bass to have a ton of highs because I know the lead is going to have a lot of highs. And so I'm sound designing and doing my sound selection based off of the needs of my track. So I'm not just adding a ton of sounds, throwing sounds at the wall until something sticks. What I'm doing is I'm selectively and subconsciously picking sounds that fit the, the, ent the entire whole did the hard thing again uh to fit the entire hole the way that i'm looking to do so that's how you should be picking out sounds it's uh pick out sounds like you're putting stuff in your fridge from the grocery store you have like you wouldn't just chuck everything in the in the fridge you have to like methodically go okay i have room for this here this here i need something that's going to fit here so i'll put something here and you're like methodically packing everything 
packing is also a great example. There's so many different examples I can use for mixing. It's like packing. It's like you have a ton of clothes that you need to fit for your trip and you're packing them in certain spots. And if you just chuck all your clothes in there, there's a very low likelihood that it's going to fit together. So if your mix sucks, it's probably because you're throwing a bunch of random stuff in your suitcase and you're not actually deciding, okay, do I actually need to bring this? Is this useful? Nope. Can I chuck that out? Cause that's just a random pizza t-shirt that I don't need. So there's just like random things that you put in there. It's probably not going to sound very good. So just be very, what is the word? Like intentional. Um, and, uh, it'll become subconscious over time of what sounds you're putting in there, but basically try to fill everything up. So everything has its particular spot and nothing's fighting for space amongst each other. And you won't need to have uh, a million EQs EQing everything because the sounds that you pick will just fit so well together that they don't need anything else. Um, last thing I guess I could go over, uh, within this track, uh, that will show some more advanced production techniques is the fact that I used, um, my master, I literally, I showed you the convolution thing. I added an OTT. This is hilarious. I have no idea why this OTT is on my master, but it sounded really good for the song. I don't normally endorse this. I think that putting this OTT on your master, it probably is going to make mess up a lot of stuff. For some reason, it just sounds good. And I listened to my mix in mono too. And I think it's okay. So uh, sometimes the stick stuff works, but I wouldn't recommend it. And sometimes it can get you in hot water. So I think I accidentally added this and I just kept it. So sometimes that happens. Um, happy accidents, Bob Ross. Uh, so with my Fruity Balance, I usually have a Fruity Balance to just turn down everything and then I master it. Uh, this, for some reason I didn't. Uh, I'll show you a different example of that. This EQ, barely boosting, barely uh, cutting, just very basic stuff here. Um, uh, if you guys can't see my master chain, I'm sorry. I realized that I, it was probably out of key. Okay, there we go. Now it's now it's better. Um, so I have my uh, parametric EQ, just barely cutting, barely doing anything. Make sure to turn the linear button on if this is your master EQ because you uh, don't want to create phasing issues or any uh, different issues like that. Um, fresh air, I do this just to boost the highs of the entire track. It sounds fantastic. Uh, this is a Frank Pohl free plugin. It's called uh, Inflator. It's based off of the Oxford Inflator. Uh, again, it's an upwards compressor and I use this on my track to kind of bring up the low points and just make it sound more full. Um, then I added a mid side EQ so I could dynamically boost the mono sub bass and I could cut the wide bass on my track and boost the, the side highs. So the width of a track in the mono of a track, I have separated in two different EQs that are both on linear mode. And then I boost, uh, the EQ on the side in the side of my headphones, I boost the highs in the sides and I cut the, the bass in the sides, the low sub bass. And then in the mono frequencies, I boost this up and I don't really do anything with the, with the rest of the mix. And if you want this, uh, I have it also in my sample pack, but it's so easy to make. And I would feel retarded if I didn't just show you, uh, just how to make it yourself. So this is what it is. It's just this, this is what the mid side splitter looks like. You just open up patcher, put this here, and then you just uh, take one of the outputs, put it to an EQ and the other output to another EQ, and then you drag it back to FL studio like so. And then that will give you a mid side EQ, which is probably one of the most nerdy but like cool things to do is to mid side eq everything and uh dynamically control the way your sound sounds with different uh your and your mono and wide i i do i love doing that it's one of my favorite mixing techniques and it honestly will level up your productions like from here to here if you just start using mid side eq uh in my opinion uh soft clipper this is just my limiter because i didn't pay for anything so this is my free limiter is it just a soft clipper so just goes to show i used to use pro l2 i loved it and then on my computer crashed i lost everything and i'm now i'm back to soft clipper so there there you have it uh two last things i can show you is on my the c the for stands for i don't know what it stands for so i'm not going to make it up uh you click that it's not your master and i put a span on here and this just helps me see what's going on in my track dynamically with my eq <laughs> And this is pretty much the best, like, uh, like, okay, in terms of a mix, like, if you're just, like, looking at that, like, look at this, it's, like, it's beautiful, like, this is the, what you are aiming for, you, like, you have the, the bass, and then it lowers off in the muddy region, and then uh, the mids aren't overtaking the entire track, but then the highs are boosted up again. To the human ear, this sounds really good this sounds really good uh this is kind of what you're looking for if you have too much going on in here it gets a little bit muddy uh, if you have too much going in here it might take away uh the balance of the track it might take away from the dynamic of it if you have a lot going on in here you're gonna have a lot of energy in your track if you have a lot going in here it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hit it's gonna hit hard okay in the in the cars so if you want to hear what it sounds like in your car without going to your car uh frank pole has another amazing plugin called uh, inspector gadget uh no it's not called inspector gadget it's called inspector 2 and you can click this on and it'll 
simulate uh, different environments. So I guess it simulates like a really bad speaker. I don't know what that is. Outside the club, it's just this is all you hear is just low end. It's all your side mix. Invert the polarity, swap the sides, and just hear the offset left and right solo. Super great. I love this. And then I just turned it off. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's uh, my master chain. I showed you my mix chains. I showed you how I layer. I showed you how I do my effects. I showed you how I do my automations. I showed you how to do rhythms with <laughs> drums. Sorry for talking so much. Uh, and I showed you how you, it's okay to use samples and loops, but it's also good to make uh, your own and that you shouldn't use it as crutches, but it's using samples is a completely legitimate way of producing. Um, what else to talk about? I guess arrangement. Uh, so arrangement, I have, I try to have some rhythmic element in every part of my track, except for the the combo, the first like eight bars. Sometimes I'll have it very washed out, and then you're like, oh, what's going on? It sounds cool, and then it like goes straight into like the the bass and like, so goes straight into this part. So that's something I'll do. Um, what else? Uh, I have the build up here. Obviously, this is a certain style of music. So you're thinking like, okay, this is EDM. Uh, so or electronic dance music particular this would be bass house maybe future house uh ish um that's kind of the what your what genre it would fit in um if you don't make this type of music that's fine your arrangement's gonna just look different uh but these producing techniques are universal and where you can take these techniques i've taught you to any genre i've made hip-hop before i've made pop rock all kinds of different genres and learning edm is i think the single greatest asset you can do to improve your production in all areas because Electronic music production teaches you every area of music production. Whereas if I just do instrumentals, I'm not going to learn a lot of FL Studio because I don't need to. With electronic music production, there's so many different techniques that so many people use that it just, you can learn so much and then, and then reapply it to certain specific genres. So if you make hip hop and you just practice your electronic music production, I think that it'll really help you with hip hop. Uh, and this is something that I learned is that I, people who I make hip hop for, they're like, wow, these songs are like really interesting. I haven't heard something like this. It's because I'm not a hip hop producer. I'm a EDM producer who tried to make hip hop by listening to some things. And so my takes on things and my uh, beats and stuff that I make can sound a lot more interesting and not like copy paste what other hip hop producers do because of just, you come from a different place. So experiment by making lots of different genres and it will actually improve the overall quality of all your music across the board. Uh, that's one thing that you can take from this. So uh, I hope that this was helpful. I just went through this part. Uh, now we're gonna go to the next part of the tour and I'll see you there. In this chapter, I'm gonna show you uh, some other tips that have to do with melodies, harmonies, and just overall uh, instrumentation and layering. So right here, I have what's called a layer. If you go to plus, uh, you can add in a layer. I forgot, I already forgot where it was. Uh, there it is, right there. So you can add in a layer. And what that will do is it'll allow you to play two instruments at the same time on your keyboard. So I added one Labs piano. Free uh, sampler, by the way, Labs are fantastic. And then I added uh, another preset here. But when I click my layer, it plays both at the same time, which is really cool. So the way I did this is that I selected all of these at the same time with my layer open and you click set children. And then this uh, becomes a parent. Uh, congratulations, he's the father. So uh, we're going to go to the piano roll and we have this layer right here. And when I, whenever I place a note, it's going to play both of these instruments at the same time. So you can hear the piano at the same time. So now I'm going to go through some of the... Uh, some of the MIDI that I have for my sample pack, uh, again, my sample pack's on my website if you're interested. And uh, and right here, I'm just gonna use some of the MIDI as an example of different ways that you can make melodies and uh, just understand uh, melody and harmony making. So let's just start with the first one. I have no idea what this sounds like. Whoa, it's so fast. All right, let's slow this down, like 110 maybe. So as you can see, uh, let's just uh, simplify this down. So uh, I have this one bass line going. And this is just a normal bass line. Like this is pretty much as simple as it gets. And then on top of this, I just added uh, another uh, note, the complement, another harmony. 
the two different notes. And you see right here that I have an A, B, A, B melody. Why is that? Because this A parts match together and then the rhythm of these B parts match together because these two notes at the end are matching. So I have A, B, A, B, okay? And then with that melody, I added another on top of there. And then this uh, has its own pattern to it, uh, which somehow works in the in the process of the whole, even though that they're actually kind of all different, but I'd still say it's A, B, A, B. Uh, anyways um but it's a little bit more complex uh basically i just kind of this is just trial and error just like placing okay i have this pattern or idea or motion in my head what am i trying to get out on here like i just kind of have this idea i'm like okay uh let's uh, like here's a better example i'm gonna just start from scratch and i'll just make a new melody and you guys can kind of see what i'm doing So it's like, dun, 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 dun. I, I can't sing, but you get the idea. So something like that you know you can make all kinds of different melodies and i just there's like pretty much like an infinite array of different melodies that can be played on top of this but a lot of it comes from uh just kind of experience i guess is the best way to put it uh, i made lots of bad melodies and so by making lots of bad melodies over and over again you can kind of see um i just want to show you a lot of melodies so that you can kind of see the patterns between them and hopefully get a better sense of like what uh you could be looking at when you're trying to make good melodies so let's get this one i want to make okay let's see what this is So again, I have this uh, interesting thing. So these are basically just chords, and then I had it playing almost like an art melody. So I can have, I could have had this like this. Like this. This was a completely valid and thing I could have done. But it sounds interesting when I have it playing like an art. So just experiment with it. Maybe it sounds better if your chords are playing more of an art melody. Uh, maybe that leads into the melody at overall as a whole. Um, so that's another thing that you could uh, try to experiment with. Um, let's keep going and see what other melodies I have here. That's a bit complicated. Let's skip that. So as you can see here, I have a very simple uh, like chord progression because it just it does it's not like a complicated rhythm, you know. It's just playing like these four bars, and it's just if I delete everything else but selected, you can hear how simple this is. So if I select um, invert selection and then just delete. This is a very simple chord progression, and then this melody on top of it. Is what gives it all the depth that it has and um i think that doing that is by having a solid if you build a solid baseline you can build a solid chord progression on top of that and you can make a solid melody on top of that or you can go the reverse direction i tend to find that either by building a strong base you can it can inspire a melody or if you have a strong melody it can inspire everything below it so you know what why don't we just try making a chord progression maybe that'll, that'll help you guys so uh something that you could do is just start with a bass so i'll do it both ways i'll start with a melody one time and i'll start with a bass another so let's just copy this. This is very mysterious, very interesting. So what if I do something like...
So I'm going to add a middle note to these. interesting I'm trying to figure out exactly how to, how, how to parse it here and then you can take these middle notes and you can go up an octave I'm not sure how I'd feel about this chord progression so far I wonder what this sounds like it's interesting um it's definitely I, I guess I don't know what the word is I'm not 100% feeling it yet. So what I might do is I might take uh, these notes and just uh, put them up an octave. As, I, as you can see here, for me, it's a lot of trial and error seeing what sounds good. Not like good right off the bat. Mm, that doesn't sound very good either. Somehow every single one of these notes sounds bad. Uh, I'll just leave it like that. I don't like that chord. So you can see like sometimes like melodies they, they don't come too easily so sometimes like starting the bass line didn't really work that time so like i'm gonna try a melody It's also difficult, and I noticed this uh, from recording other times as well, is that uh, long periods of silence for me uh, happen because I'm thinking and I'm also trying to uh, produce and teaching and producing are like two different sides of my brain. So like I almost cannot do it at the same time and switching between them, as you can see, is a very difficult for me and also makes it really hard to make melodies. And a lot of times I'll spend even longer making really bad melodies until something good comes up. Uh, so it just goes to show that not every time you open up the piano roll, you're going to make something awesome. And sometimes you could use a different source of inspiration. So for that reason, why don't I try finding a sample? And maybe that can uh, help me come up with a cool melody or something that could help and spark some inspiration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up ADSR Sample Manager. And this is so awesome because if you download free sample packs or buy sample packs, what happens is, is that they can all be stored in ADSR Sample Manager. And then I can search up different types of samples and it will sort them for me automatically. And I, I can very quickly find something I'm looking for. So I'm going to look up for a dr cool drum sample uh, sample and then just scroll and then I only want loops. So I'm going to click off of that arrow. Okay, so 110, that sounded really cool. I'm going to use this metal rhythm and I'm going to turn it down an octave just to see what it sounds like. That's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to search up, instead of drums, I'm going to find some type of weird guitar loop, maybe, and just scroll down. That's really interesting. Okay, so now we have this.
Okay, this is really cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sample and I'm actually going to put it uh, wide. So what uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to use the sampler and I'm going to teach you guys how to make melodies. So I'll just do both at the same time. Kill two birds with one stone. Uh, so except for there will be no death in the making of this video. Okay, so uh, when I open up the sampler here is I just double click on any sample and I can change different uh, thing, things and qualities about it. So right there, I turned down the pitch of the sample down an octave. Uh, there's also reverse. I could reverse the sample. <laughs> also kind of cool uh you can do all, all sorts of things i can change how uh how long it takes before the sample goes in i can change how long it takes till the sample goes out i can crossfade it uh which is really complicated but really cool um if i click uh, not this wrench tool but if i click the other tool it lets me boost the volume of that i can clip i can clip it i do that a lot for drums and make it sound really cool um you can also add stereo delay which is going to make it sound really wide but it is going to mess up the stereo image slightly <laughs> I, it, the stereo image is fine right now, so I'll leave it at with the stereo widened, and then I'll control L with this guitar as well. I'm going to add a chorus to this guitar, because I feel like that would sound really cool, so I'm just going to add a vintage chorus, turn that down. I'm going to cut out the lows out of the, out of the guitar. And then this is just a, a loop. So I still need to add like drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my own sample pack. This is not the one I'm selling, but this is just the one I've built over time. So I'm going to just find some kind of cool clap here. That's like a hip hop clap. That's fine. We'll just use this one. So we have. Oh, I want it. I want it faster, just like this. And then I need a hi hat. So I need the hi hat to kind of just play over and over again. A very fast hi hat, like yeah, perfect. Just something like this. And then I'm going to go to my paint tool and just paint across. I'm going to put the control L and then I'm going to add pancake onto it. And what pancake does is, and it's funny because I have pancakes for everything this morning. Uh, pancakes is, uh, pancakes, pancake two is going to change this area image to go left and right. So it'll make it more interesting for our hi hat. And here going back and forth. And then, you know what, why don't we add a crazy reverb on this and then have it uh, just decay over time. It just gets uh, turned down over time. So we'll just turn that uh, decay or turn the reverb off, then create an automation like this and then have it start all the way at the top and then lower over time. And then we could have it go like in a crazy 808 just hit really hard. And then we could have a, a kick. Uh, let's make a kick and clap a combo here. That's perfect. We'll just use that kick. So we'll have it kind of go like. Just the easiest drum loop of all time. And then just copy and paste that over and over again. So we'll just select uh, the drums that we have here. Highlight them. Uh, select that part of the song and only the drums and control B, 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 B. And then it's going to put that exactly uh, over and over again for us. And then to make it really interesting, let's zoom in here, copy this drum again, paste it, click make unique as sample, and then go here and then reverse it. And then we can just uh, not stretch it, but we can click off a stretch. Then we can turn this down. Oh my goodness, I can't click. Turn this down like that, like so. And then that will make it so that it kind of slides in. Uh, and then we'll just take that out and then make it a little bit longer.
and then we'll add a base here. So now we need to add an 808. So this 808, uh, we want it to hit the hard. So we are going to put an 808 loop here. Uh, and I'm going to go to vital and I'm going to go to whatever 808 sample I have. And I'm just going to put control L and then I'm going to go and find the exact. So I save all my presets and I save all of my effects for those presets. So I have file, save mixer track, stay as. So if I make any changes to this mixer, I add things that I like at the end of it, I can go on this mixer, right click, go to file, save as, and I can save and type in the name that I want that mixer preset to be. And then I can go to my, um, the, the sound that's going to that mixer. And I can go up here to the file, go save preset as, and then I click that and I name it the exact same thing so that I can open up my sound and I can open up my mixer preset for that sound every time I want it. So then I have, uh, I can save my work from other songs and put them in, in over time. So I'm never like losing my work. Uh, and it helps you be a better producer over time because then you can have your work carry over, you know? So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's make an 808 preset. I don't really like this 808, so we're going to change it. It's just too, uh, I don't know, it's not really working for me. So let's find something else. Let's see, did I make another one? Maybe I don't have one. Let's see if I can make something quick here. And then we'll just copy and paste this and then change the thing it hits. It's not really fitting for me. I'm not really feeling the 808 pattern right here at all. I think it's not, it's because I don't like uh, the patch either. So I'm gonna change the flex. I'm just gonna go to premade 808 so I don't take forever on making something. But as you can see, lots of ideas and lots of things that you try are not going to work first try and the point is not to try something it doesn't work and then quit because that's what a beginner producer does uh an advanced producer try something it doesn't work owns up to the fact that it didn't work and try something else again um and i've made plenty of hip-hop songs before but not every single one turns out the way i wanted to and not every idea turns out the same so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to find a different thing and see if i can make it work <laughs> First of all, it's because this is out of key, so I need to fix that. And then I can also fix it a little bit by just maybe clipping it here instead.
I mean, yeah, the sevens. This isn't my like favorite song in the entire world. Um, I wish I could have made something more interesting here. I had an idea and I kind of lost it already because it's kind of taking me too long. Uh, which happens. So I might need to come up with a different new idea. Again, I think that part of the issue with uh, trying to show advanced production live for me is uh, that the part of my brain that explains and the part of my brain that produces are two different parts. And sometimes it takes me five minutes to make something really cool. Sometimes it makes me it takes me two hours. And obviously, I don't have that kind of like, I don't have the luck that every single idea I come up with that hopefully while I'm making the tutorial live that it's going to be good. But um, that's just the way it is sometimes. So uh, hopefully by me not being able to make something cool, you guys could have learned something too. And that it's encouraging that not every time that you sit down at the computer, you're going to make something. But I forgot what saying it was, but it's uh, that sometimes that it's inevitable that you're going to make something good. You just have to sit through the production times of making bad things over and over again to get them out of the way until the good thing comes along. So hopefully that's encouraging for you is that every time that you sit at the computer, don't expect to make something good, but rather just go, hey, if I make something bad, that's one less bad thing I have until I make something good. So just think, just change your mind, mindset a little bit differently. And then hopefully that will encourage you to make better things. So uh, I showed you guys about the sampler and different things that you can do in the sampler. Uh, one thing that I really like to do also is go to Stretch Pro and then change this. And this just format shifts it. So you can have all kinds of really cool stuff here. <laughs> I still really like this beginning part. It's really chill. Uh, it's really cool. So um, that's just uh, just another example. Just the form and shifting. I love doing that to vocals. It sounds really cool. And then um, putting this on Stretch Pro. Also, if I change this an octave down, it won't change the tone. But if I uh, put this just on Stretch, listen to it now. With Stretch Pro, it like tries to retain the same format. It's interesting. It's quite interesting. So I really like using the format shift, the Stretch Pro. Whenever they added that, huge, huge. I love that uh, update so much. So that's just something cool. Uh, also, you can change the octave by uh, right-clicking on these notes. This will change it. So just another way for you to change the pitch here if you need to go a little bit further in pitch. Um, anyways, so I showed you guys how to use the sampler. I showed you guys uh, different ways that you can use samples in your productions. Uh, and I also showed you guys uh, a little bit about making melodies. Uh, the funny thing was is that uh, pretty much all the melodies I made today were not good. And then all the samples I tried using in production also weren't good. But I did like this um, this one percussion loop here, editing that to make it fit with this beginning part. That at least was kind of interesting. Um, so hopefully you guys got to saw a little bit of that. Uh, maybe I could pull up another production and then show you guys a different example uh, of something that did turn out well. And then we're good with that right now. So I found a project that I worked on and this was something that I made a little while ago and this shows a better example of how you can use samples and melodies uh, more effectively and just making a very simple production. So this was just a very basic idea I made. So this was a sample I made. <laughs> samples just as quick uh, idea starters for me um they really help me when i'm making music but this is something uh that i made uh it just has a few different patterns so this is one of them so you see i have multiple layers going on at the same time so i have let's just play the bass in this one So you see, I have uh, a call. It's kind of like asking a question. You can almost see that this, this first part right here is just asking a question. And then this is an answer. This asks the same question again, but with a different base. So it's like almost like a different, I don't even know. And then a, a different answer. And then it plays the same again, it goes over again. And then ask the same thing again with a different bass pattern and then finishes off by the kind of completing the whole thing. and then it repeats
Peace and love. And then I have uh, a different, a completely different pattern going in the background. This. So as you can see, I have a, a counter melody here. I have my main melody here, and I have my 808 bass, just playing a very simple melody here. And when all these things combine, I with the melody and the counter melody and the bass, you have a full, uh, more complete track. And then what I did was I actually exported that melody out and then messed with it around by pitching it down and changing the way it was formatted and stuff, and then added tons of effects to it. So. <laughs> made it even more interesting by adding like a chorus and then all kinds of stuff like i've done like a bit pressure try that Be a little bit too much but you know what there's like different things that you can try here so uh try sampling your own melodies so like make melodies create a sample out of it by going up here right clicking going to consolidate track and then from track start or song start whichever one you'd like and then what that's going to do is it's going to consolidate that into a mel uh into a sample and then you can use that sample to either develop your own sample packs or to make your own tracks and that's what i mostly use it for so hopefully this was a better example than me uh failing multiple times on how to make uh, melodies and how to uh, make just beats and just like um, uh, how to use samples uh, in your productions but hopefully this was a, uh, a good um, a better example of what can happen so uh, and notice that I made this probably when I wasn't recording and when I was just kind of like oh I have this idea in my head and then it just kind of happened so um, those are two different ways that you can produce and so hopefully that was more helpful for you uh, so you may have been wondering why it took me so long to release this course and i want to tell you i have tried recording this course so many times and just to prove it i'm actually going to show you one of the versions of this course that never got released it was me making a one hour challenge and then that one hour challenge i was going to take and then collab with my friend who's going to record vocals his guitar we're going to record all everything and then we're going to finish that song and then i was going to analyze the collab edit that we did together as the final uh thing for the for the full advanced uh, pr uh tutorial so I thought, hey, why not just add that onto the tutorial I've already gotten finished? So I did. So I'm added <laughs> after this, you're going to see a, another one hour section. I'll be making a one hour challenge just to show you what the advanced uh, production technique looks like when it's condensed into a shorter time frame. And I, you can tell in that video, I was really not feeling it. I was like, I don't know if this is going to turn into anything. I was just, uh, I was nervous. I wasn't sure. I'd record the video so many times. I was like, eh, it's probably just going to be another take I'm not going to use, but I am going to use it. And uh, you know what? I'm going to show you what the final track between uh, me and blender bass turned out like and it's not even close to finished which is sad but hey it happens uh and the project file that i have is uh kind of i'm gonna try to find it i'm gonna try to reopen it and then i'll analyze that after i show you the one hour challenge and then i'll try to do that as well just to kind of finish out on a strong note so without further ado uh i'm just gonna play this uh version of the song and then uh, I will show you the one hour challenge. And from there, I will go into the project for this one hour challenge that is corrupted and some of it doesn't work, but I still want to show you at least what we got done. Um, so I'll play this and then you can see the one hour challenge and see how it got to this point. All right. Behind me, 
So that is super crazy, uh, super interesting. Uh, a lot of it is like it's stuff I've never made before. He's never made before. It's just like it's this crazy idea is just happening. Uh, a lot of it is like really experimental is the word I'd use. It's not like something you listen to on the radio. It's kind of like, what is this? Like, like I've never heard anything like this. But it's cool. It's, it's fun to make stuff like this. Um, anyways, uh, so now here is the one hour challenge. And when you come back from this and see what I worked on for an hour, you can see what uh, Blendbase uh, helps collab on. So let's, let's check it out. Okay. Okay. So my first attempt, I forgot to hit the timer. So I'm gonna have to restart. So this is gonna be attempt two. So let me just grab my notepad. Oop. This is attempt two. And this time I'm actually gonna start the timer. Let's just open up a new thing in FL. Fresh. And then we're just gonna collapse everything in the browser. All right. Now, I'm just going to hit the timer, and we are going to go. So, let's try this again. Attempt two. This time, I hit the timer, so I'm actually doing the challenge. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start off. Last time, we started off with the drums, and it's kind of sounded interesting, but this time, I want to start off with the piano, so we're going to do a little bit different. Um, let's see. I want to pick something cool. Like I want to make something that's like like house drums but like acoustic so i want to try something interesting basically go here let me turn my notifications off on my phone so i can focus uh convolver i highly recommend i actually when i would produce i'd put my phone in a different room it was actually really helpful um but i mean obviously if you have people that you need to be con in contact with obviously keep your phone with you okay let's stick this here
like your stereotypical pop song if I've ever heard it. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is, let's just keep it with the piano, honestly. This is going to be just keep things simpler. Um, the only thing that can make this more stereotypical is if I added rain, so let's do that. Um, let's go to recordings. No, no, just kidding. Not there. Um, where is it? My samples rendered. Also, if you notice, I don't talk a lot when I produce. This is uh, what the problem every almost every single time I recorded this is that uh, I found that I literally barely talk when I'm trying to make music. So when I start explaining, I actually do worse. So that being said, uh, if I'm quiet for most of the time, uh, the second half is going to be more me explaining this, as I said before. So that's why I'm trying to separate it in my head. That way I can focus on just making good music. Okay, let's add another labs. No, just kidding. It's going to be... I need like a really, really electric guitar. Very electric. Come on. That was loud. Oh, these are bass guitars. I'm blind.
I need like a, a bass guitar here that's gonna just be in the background and kind of Ooh, that's nice. I like that one. You'll, you'll hear my idea in a second. I'm just gonna go. Ooh, there we go. That was super cool. I literally just accidentally hit the Z key on my keyboard with the the clap and it sounded so cool. Hold on. That could be like a snare sample, right? Like, ooh. Complete accident. Okay, let's keep going. Um, 140. I like that a lot. samples because I have to speed it along here otherwise I wouldn't make my own, my own drums right now okay I want to see what key we're in 1 billion percent so I'm gonna take the chords here paste in the melody and see what it tells me 
A sharp major for sure. Okay, for sure, for sure. A sharp major. Okay, I can see if I have a vocal in A sharp major and waste a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, let's go to ADR, ADSR sample manager. I can't remember if I already explained this because I know I for sure did in the first first tutorial, but I mean the first attempt of this, but I don't know if I have used this yet. So I'm just gonna look up another A sharp major. It's crazy. We're like when I actually just focus on making music and like am not explaining everything, I swear I make like ten times better stuff. Okay. I'm gonna look up vocal. There's literally only one vocal in a sharp major. I don't really like it. Put a, a major as well, and I'll also do. I want multiple, multiple keys. It's fine. It could be a different key. It's not a big deal. That could be cool if I pitch it down and like you couldn't really tell. So it needs to be like that. Okay, so I have that so far. Uh, okay, I'm gonna check my time. No, I'm not gonna check my time. I'm not gonna cheat. All right, focus your You need to make some type of drop. Some type of. Uh, okay, I already have an idea. I have an idea. Okay, so we're at 140 BPM. I'm not even gonna make a build up straight up. Just gonna go like, just like that. So it's literally gonna stop right on this. I need to get rid of that tiny little hit head, hit head right there. Ooh, that kind of sounds dope. Like if you have it like.
Okay, this is gonna go, this is, this is gonna be a little bit crazy because I'm just gonna, I need a kick that just hits hard. Just a, just an absolutely devastating kick. Like, because I'm gonna make something, something loud here. Need a kick. Video Show Sync Manager, this is the best. I like how hard kick is like the least hard. Oh, that's because it's stretching the sample. Whoops. Okay, that's yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> um, no, too too much. Ooh, was this a? I just I just want the one kick. And then I need a, a snare that's like. Psh. Give me a snare. Need 808s, 808, 808. Ooh, that's thick. I'm gonna use this one sampler. Oh, this is the same 808 I made that, that mixer track for. Bet. Uh, speed, Tristan, speed, you speed. That's cool. I like this a lot. So I need um some type of the chord's gonna hit like on the Dow beat like this, make unique, and I need to no, I mean oh wait, that's fine, that's not a big deal. Okay. Let's think. Let's use surge and I'm gonna pick some type of chords that are like keys, artificial. <laughs> Okay, um, let's get Could be interesting. Uh, let's use that. Sure. Just gotta hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I don't have much, I don't, I have zero clue on how much time I have right now. Zero clue. I'm just gonna go like this. And then I want it to just be like a... Add like a 
I don't want to add a limiter to my master. Let me just turn it down. absolutely zero delay on this and then there needs to be zero reverb on this too and then i also need this to have like no release turned up Needs a little bit more decay. some type of lead on top of here that's like something um it's, i don't really have anything i don't think maybe like a do i have a preset maybe that sounds good oh that's pretty cool yeah perfect Come on, fast, speed, no.
this needs like So, so far we have a fairly boring-ish, like, okay, so we have like an intro. I can imagine a vocal here. normally make hip-hop so this is like really interesting i actually don't know what to do after this like i could try to make a drop um but i started at 140 bpm so it's like weird like can't do house um let's see i really want to look at my timer but i know i'm not supposed to okay i guess i could I'm gonna take a second to just sit back and like think about this while I listen to it.
think a vocal would really help me right now come up with ideas i usually what i do is i'll have like kind of like a base idea like this send it to a vocalist and then as soon as i get it back i like have a billion ideas this it's without a vocal it's hard sometimes to think about like what to do next um also i think the timer definitely makes me it's harder to focus on like just like ideas and stuff because you're like you don't want to waste time um Since this is so unique in a way, I don't really know how the arrangement's supposed to go. I mean, I guess I could strip it down even more in the beginning. I could like move this forward, just have this. Do something like that. And then you could literally just fade it in over time. That's clean. You know, you know it is. Um, okay, so I got that would also kind of sound cool here. So sometimes this is a great uh, a great point to sometimes you need to know when to let your ideas die because those chords are too low pitched. I knew they were. I tried EQing them out, but you just noticed that they just weren't fitting in the mix. And if something's not fitting, you just need to cut it. Uh, that just needs to be cut. I should have done that a long time ago. So let me listen to this again. This is a boring sound. I need to change it. Uh, but instead of changing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, paste it, mute it. So I'm just going to clone it, copy it, paste it, mute it. And then I'm going to go to this, and then I can change this without changing what I had before. So.
turn back on this. So my initial idea was that it was going to be like, I should do this on piano. Cause if I show you guys on piano, maybe it would make more sense. Like what my initial idea was. So what I really wanted to do was I wanted to have it be like, uh, let me show you by getting the melody as well here. Um, so like my idea was, it was going to be like, and then it would be like, Dun, 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 dun. Like, mm, not like that, like, like the I like the kind of drops where like it has chords and a lead but they're not going at the same time they're kind of like bouncing back and forth that could be cool um I could look at my time and then just call it or I could keep going and if I keep going I'm trying to figure out what I do because I can mess around with different keys So if I go, it sounds really cool for like the first hit, but then these, these notes are too low, so I need to go back up. To be real with you, A sharp is a bit too low. I don't like to go below D sharp. So yeah, D sharp is kind of the lowest I like to go with my, with my bass. D sharp, D. That's usually the lowest you can go without it sounding like weird in the sub area. I don't know why. It's just that it's always like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's good. It, it's, it's all right. Um, let's see the timer. 13 minutes. I'm just gonna stop it. I'm gonna stop it right there. And you know what? We'll say that that was attempt. That was attempt two. I gotta get back to my Apple Studio here. Okay. So let's talk about this for a second. So um what i did was i i love doing this little intro thing so what i do is i take fruity convolver and i will put on my master and put it to the pink noise preset okay and then what that does is essentially like if you listen it blows everything out like in terms of reverb. and it just creates this really warm like i could honestly i could even do this like this would probably make it sound really good yeah, like this, this right here. Yeah, yeah, like th something like this would be perfect. So you just kind of take these two, boom. the future like song of like what it's going to be but it doesn't quite give it away yet because it's like all reverbed out so you can't really tell um i like starting with the bass and the drums immediately off the start you want to hook in your listener another way we could hook in the listener here is from the start of here we could have a, a reverse that kind of goes into it so um if i had like some type of uh what's it called sweep uplifter Perfect. Just something like this. 
Very simple. Uh, every eight bars, you want to add something new. This is constant. So, honestly, if I really want to make this interesting, I could probably take these vocal things for right now and then just leave it like this. and I think they sound cool. I also speed up the bass here. Um, that's just to kind of give a little bit more movement because you don't want to ever stay like stagnant. So like I can make this super boring, like but just keep this the same too. And then I like didn't do anything new in this part other than maybe add the chords. I like it's fine, but this it just picks it up a notch. I think that this is huge. Um, and then obviously when I get into this part, this is just a huge producer life hack if you just take out all the volume right before the the drop it makes it hit just that much harder so i think that's that's cool um i'm gonna add in some saturation so i didn't really add any saturation to this that's like a million times better already i can't believe i didn't do that before um so yeah saturation your uh sub bass it just adds those extra harmonics so like if we go into the sub bass right here And for those of you saying that I my uh, my sub bass is wide, uh, it is not actually. I'm using bass lane, and what this does is it widens certain bands of frequencies over other bands. So I'm actually widening 500 hertz right here on my sub, which is like really interesting because it means that the sub frequencies are going to stay low. So like I could literally take a mid side EQ here, like if I go to patcher, and I go to uh, mid side. Uh, I made this preset and I'll just straight up give you the uh, guys this for free. Uh, this is so helpful and I want you guys to have it. Um, it so basically like that's without the wide. Hear the difference? And then I can literally take out the, the lows and the highs and it literally will sound no different because Huh, I guess the state away has a little bit of width in the bottom. That's fine. Uh, it still sounds good, so I'm not going to fuss over it too much. I mean, I, if you really were worried about the 808 sounding wide in the bottom, I guess you could always put it in mono. Too. It still hits. That's fine. Uh, so, yeah, I like I like the way that that sounds. So, uh, I also really like using that in general, just so I could put, like, a patcher here with my mid-side EQ preset. And if you do this, um, I like... I don't know why I need to resave this preset where the stereo is on the bottom. Uh, basically, it splits the bands into a mid-side EQ. Basically, means that you can take the the frequencies that are in mono and mix them separately from the side frequencies. So that's what this bar is right here. So when I turn this wide, it makes things get wider, and when I put it this way, it makes things mono. So the reason I have it like that is so that I can mix these separately. So like, listen. the highs and that just kind of like tingles your ears okay so i would sidechain the bass but i've noticed for a lot of hip-hop producers they actually don't sidechain the bass in the kick and for some reason it makes it distort when the kick hits the bass and it sounds actually cooler uh so like if i were to sidechain this it would just kind of 
lack that kind of uh messy energy like where it's just like everything's just kind of hitting into each other like that sounds cool for hip-hop so i've kind of noticed this is kind of a thing to do if i take that and then i might just oh that's the vocal what am i doing where's the I might add it like a transpire on this and then just boost add a little bit of saturation oh that's on the wrong thing so funny that's fine i actually never put these on mixer tracks that's crazy let's put that on the mixer track there we go um It's funny because I'm doing like this one hour challenge, but I literally like just woke up <laughs> and I'm just going right into it right in the morning. Uh, I usually produce like really late at night. I would like to hear when you guys like to produce. I, I made some of my best tracks at like 4 a.m. in the morning. It's hilarious. Obviously, it's not good for your sleep, but I mean, yeah. Um, okay. So what else can we, can we talk about about this? So uh, we talked about the progression and how we just want to kind of increase energy over time, but also keep the listener engaged. You want to change things? Uh, eight bars. Uh, like keep something changing all the way through. Uh, I think some other things that uh, intermediate producers I, I know struggle with is that, yeah, with one thing is keeping things interesting, um, hooking the listener right away, uh, not having to keep everything all the time. So I don't actually need this melody playing the whole time. I could actually take this out. Like, and this would actually be really good because what I can do is I can have a singer on here and they could be like singing here and just doing their thing. Just have the melody coming in that beginning part and then just have the singer come in here. I can't sing, but if I would sing, it would, yeah, it probably wouldn't sound good. So, uh, let's see. And then you bring in the melody here and then you're like, okay, that leads you into it. And then I could completely change the melody here too. Like just for, for instance, like we could literally just change the whole thing. right now. Could be fun. Let's just try. Never mind, we're not going to change the volume. Okay, so another thing is that be cognizant of what BPM you're in and what kind of stuff that you're making. Because obviously, like, I can't make house at 140. So, like, just keep it consistent in terms of, like, what you're trying to do. I think that that's uh, some people, like, they'll don't change the BPM during your track. It's confusing for the listener. Um, it, like, I would stick to, like, kind of one whole idea uh, per track. If you have, like, four ideas going on in a track, like, it's going to just confuse the listener. So, um, I wasn't doing anything crazy here. Uh, I started making hip hop because I was at 140 and I just stuck with it. I didn't change the BPM. I could have, I could have like, maybe I could like turn it down to, eh, I don't really want to do that because I would stretch everything, but that's fine. I'll just leave it how it is. Uh, I'm trying to think it's, it's also harder for me to give advice with hip hop music because I don't actually make a lot of it. Uh, I make a lot of future balance and like different, uh, EDM genres, but I've been trying to do more hip hop because it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to produce. Um, so let me, let me think typically what you saw me, uh, mess around with these vocal samples. Uh, don't look at something immediately and just go like, no, try to see like the potential and like things that you could use. So you saw the vocal sample I picked and you probably like, eh, that does not fit at all. But I heard something in there and I was able to pull it out to make something kind of cool. So like now we have this and that adds a huge, just like background element. 
Also, another thing is that notice how I just because I found something cool, I didn't have to use it constantly. So like this crush, this was like this little uh um this thing that like uh I forgot what what the term is called, but it has a certain effect on the vocals that I liked, but I didn't want it the whole time. See, it's not there. And doing these kind of things where you don't do it all the time adds a lot of progression to your uh, to your music. So like taking out the rain sounds in in the drop here, if I kept them in, it's just kind of more going on if I take it out. It just has that more of that drop in feel where like you're hearing a lots of sound here. I could honestly, I could. fake out there there's so many uh, potential things you could do but once you like kind of like suck everything out once it's like it's all like sustained and then like you can just take cut everything and then it hits so much harder so uh that's that's one huge thing uh one thing i didn't do which i could show you guys is if a uh, really cool trick basically you're gonna go to your master create an automation clip and then create one automation clip on on the stereo as well and then what you do is for the stereo separation you're gonna put it up like just maybe like halfway and then for the volume you're gonna go down like three decibels do that do that and then check this out okay that might be a little bit too much on the volume side let me one sec go like right here you don't want to do the volume too much on the master but just as effect everything kind of goes lower and like more in in your headphones out last second it's super cool I, I love doing that so that's another cool trick that you guys can do um let's see for a one hour challenge or i guess like a 50 minute 45 minute i mean i didn't really i wasn't really producing the last five minutes i was kind of just thinking uh i guess yeah uh don't be afraid to use loops right here i just wanted to save time and it was a cool idea and it sounded nice so i just kept it in there it's not a big deal um using loops can just give you a lot of creativity and freedom free up the mind to do other ideas um let's see here i have like a sharp major i could add in like other stuff so like let's find another sample that sounds cool with this so i go back to adsr sample manager and i'm just going to repeat this part right here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go only on loops and i'm only going to search up a sharp major samples and just literally play them with the song and this can lead to all kinds of ideas sounds interesting i know it doesn't fit in how it is but i think like if i like let me show you an example of something so like let's say i have some, a sample that doesn't quite fit and you can do things to make it fit sometimes so like i can take out so like maybe that doesn't work but maybe i can like take this and like pitch it up maybe. Never know. Just do something like that. Maybe not. I, I always like to check. So sometimes I'll just throw in samples in there and then like sometimes you get lucky and you're like, oh wow, that sounded like perfect. And then you can just keep it as like a background element or just like uh just something for uh one half of the arrangement. So um don't uh, if you ever are like looking for new ideas and you're just like, I'm stuck at this, like try throwing in a sample or two and just see like if it sparks some idea. And even if you don't use the sample, you can always use it to make something else that's similar or like that you think would lead to a cooler idea. 
So uh, that's like another cool trick. I'm trying to like, I think one huge thing for uh, moving from the kind of beginner intermediate to advanced stages is that you need, me, uh, need to feel more comfortable working faster. So you probably saw in this, my workflow was 10 times faster than my beginner tutorial. And that's because I wasn't limited by having to explain every single thing I did. And I'm just kind of assuming that you guys already know what you're doing. So I could just zoom through all this, like, like just click through everything. And even though I'm going quickly, if you watch how I go quickly, then you are able to probably copy me later. And then that'll help you guys improve as well. So uh, I'm trying a different method of uh, just basically teaching a lesson here because uh, the, the first way I did it in the beginner tutorial, I thought was helpful if you'd never produced before. But if you are producing, I think trying to think about the things that you don't know, like there's a lot of things that you just don't know. And uh, basically how it was for me is I look up tutorials and I try to find things that they could inform me on that I didn't already know. But a lot of times you're just telling me how to do something rather than telling me the why behind it. And so I like explaining the reasons of why I do things rather than giving you like a technical explanation a lot of times because that'll be more beneficial to you in the long run. So let me give you a good example of this. I could like one technical thing I, I told you guys was about the revolver trick and that's practical. You could use that in your own, um, but it doesn't tell you why I, di I did this. And if I explain why I did it, if I, if I say, okay, I want to give contrast from the intro to the song and then draw the listener's ear in right as the song starts so that it starts off on the beat like immediately so i have no kicks no drums going on here and then immediately that's going to draw the listener in okay in the first five seconds of the song uh it's the same idea here where i take out everything this part and then this beginning part are the same thing they're the same concept uh, and doing it right before the transition from the bridge to the chorus and from the, I mean, not the bridge, my bad, um, the build up to the chorus and the intro to, or I guess the starting intro to the intro gives that same effect of the, the why behind it would be, I want to, cr uh, create a, not necessarily a surprise, but something that catches the, the listener's ear immediately. So that's something to think about. So I think that that, that's the reason I like doing this Kimbalber trick, for instance. Another way I could help you guys with like a technical thing balanced with the reason for why I do it is, uh, I think I explained that with the, with the crush technique is that I didn't, we're not just, I'm not teaching you just, Oh, use crush. It's cool for your plugin. And if you do this effect, it's cool. Uh, basically I was like, okay, well, once you find something cool, um, I didn't want to do it all the time because it doesn't keep the song interesting. So keeping the song flowing, moving so that the listener wants to keep listening uh, you want to add change throughout your song. So if I just kept this the same the whole time, it would just sound, it wouldn't be bad. It just would be less interesting. So if, I mean, if I just keep it on. I mean, it doesn't, the weird thing is that there's a lot of things in music that don't sound bad. So you can leave them like that, but then until you do something different that sounds better then you're like oh that sounds even better and that's why uh, i highly recommend that you guys collaborate with artists find people your skill level and then just ask them you have to kind of just take a leap and just be like hey man you want to make you want to make a song and then just do that and i think that that would be it would be so helpful for you guys i remember i would just join a bunch of discords and i'd literally just sit in a discord with like five people and we'd all make music like dead silent while we're making music and then we'd like dm each other later like hey you want to make a song and then that's that's literally like how i learned how to make music. I think it's one of the best ways too, because you're matching people with your skill level and then working with them uh, will help you all improve um, as you keep practicing together. Uh, and then what you want to do is just keep making friends with better and better producers and then just keep working up and building your skills and slowly by slowly, you'll meet uh, like people that are a little bit better than you that maybe have already released on a label and they'll want to uh, be with you. I mean, if you're just a nice person and you're fun to hang out with, um, it's really easy to make friends with uh, good producers and just uh, learn and get better. So I think one super underrated tip uh, where like you might go on YouTube and you might look up for like tutorials on how to become a better producer and they might give you all these mixing techniques. And I did, I, I told you about Patcher and mid side EQ is massive. It's so helpful, but it's not going to turn you into professional. Just knowing mid side EQ, what will really turn you into professional is making connections with artists that are uh, bigger than you and just uh, having, ha having your name out there a little bit more and just knowing people. Um, and I mean, if that's, if that's your goal, that's, that's really the, what you want to do. Um, there was this really good artist and he gave me advice. He basically told me, he said the difference between, um, a good producer and a great producer has, uh, how did he put it? He didn't say it. 
he basically said um it doesn't have to do with technical ability or anything he said i've seen uh good artists that are way more technically better than professional artists and i've seen professional artists that are vice versa you know um but his his point was is that it's not necessarily about the technical ability but also the knowledge and the skills of uh being an artist are different than just technical ability so knowing music theory doesn't make you a professional artist uh knowing the whole all of fl studio doesn't make you a professional artist and so that's why i would say that i would i am a professional music producer but i wouldn't say i'm a professional artist um there's a big difference because I, I just haven't released music so i can't really be considered a, a professional artist even though i've made hundreds and hundreds of songs and i made songs for clients and i've done all that I, I wouldn't be technically considered a professional musician simply because i don't have professionally released songs so i would really like to do that um but obviously just haven't figured out exactly what niche i want to uh, start in and what kind of music i want to make i mean even you saw even this one hour challenge i wasn't even really sure what i was making <laughs> I mean, it, like turned it into hip-hop but i don't really like to make hip-hop all that often so um i digress uh so just trying to think of more advanced techniques uh and the last uh attempt of this, this is attempt two and the last attempt what i did was i actually used edison to record a sound design session so like let me let me show you what i mean i'll literally stick edison on my master here uh actually let's save this and just go out of the file i think that i pretty much showed also happy accidents bob ross moment when i accidentally hit my keyboard and made that cool snare That was so cool. I'm like so happy I did that. That was like such an awesome. I'm gonna do that in my other tracks. I didn't even know that that could sound that cool. Is this just on C? Yeah, it literally is. It's just one octave below. So if I put these on the same. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um. Okay, so let's go into a new template. I just wanna show you guys some stuff. So this. That was kind of like my reflection on the one hour challenge. Uh, I also just want to show you guys other advanced techniques that I, I think would be really helpful to you. So I think, I'm not sure what you guys are necessarily expecting. I know I've been getting emails almost every day asking me to do a second course. And um, if I systematically went through every advanced technique in FL Studio, we'd probably be here for like about a year because there's so many different things that I could go through and all of them are important. So I'm trying to give you guys the tools that will enable you. Like, uh, so instead of giving you fish i want to teach you how to fish obviously so i want to teach you the methods that i use to become a good producer instead of just telling you facts or telling you stuff that is helpful but you're probably not going to remember because this is a long tutorial it's going to be like probably over an hour and so i want to give you ways of becoming better that way you can become better artists on your own instead of uh, watching tons of tutorials and then forgetting everything and that and still being the same level producer which definitely happens um so i don't want to trick you guys with tutorials I want to help you improve. So one thing that could help you improve is by simply just going on your master, sticking an Edison on there. That's a factor, <laughs> not a factor. It's a cool plugin, but not what I was looking for. Edison. I'm just going to hit record and I'm literally just going to go to vital. And then as soon as you just start messing around, you're recording in here. So I can literally just find some like, like, Sam. So as you can see, I like just was messing around for a second. And then, uh, where am I? I need this. So you can take this, right? And I can actually drag and drop this immediately by clicking this button right here into the playlist. And I could take something like this. Right? I could copy that. I like that. I could literally copy and make this as a unique sample save this it's going to go into 
uh, my backup, and then I can go to TW samples. I can go to um, where is it? My samples rendered, and then this is called September thirteenth part one. Blah blah blah. I could just call this da da da, and then I could save it, and then I could go back to our project file that we just in, and then I could literally just pull. Let me show you guys an example. Because that, that was what, an A-sharp major, and I just did that in C major. So, let me just go one, two steps down, and then whole octave up. Get that. So, I have this right here. I'll just literally go to my samples. My samples. Just refresh it. Da, da, da. Okay, so I just need to pitch it down twice. Go up once. Stretch, maybe like stretch it so it fits in, like I have no idea, like just. It doesn't really sound that good, but uh, just for instance, you could see how this could be cool. Like where you just have a recording where you could just go in Edison, sound design, cut a small part of it, and then use that in your tracks. So you never really know what you'll get, like just messing around. And a lot of times you miss it. Like you're like, oh, that sounded so cool. And then you like don't have it. Every time you sound design, just hit Edison and you'll literally never miss any of those moments. And then what you can do is you can have a folder like this where you just save all of those recordings of your Edison sound design. And then you'll have all of those as your own library of samples. And I started doing this, my computer unfortunately crashed. So like, I obviously, I didn't make this advanced tutorial for another eight months. So <laughs> the reason being for that was for a lot of reasons. One, my computer completely failed. I lost everything and I had to like restart from scratch. And then that was like really difficult. Um, the second thing was more of a personal uh, thing with a relationship. So like, I was like, I was like really down. So I just was not in the mental state to like make another thing. So I was tough. And then, so after I got, I kind of refixed my computer, got a new laptop, Got a new setup, obviously, well, you can't see because I'm doing green screen, but I'm in a new place right now. I got a new microphone. I got new everything. That took about like two-ish months. Then by that time, I was thinking about doing personal courses uh, for the people in the first beginner class, but I said not to because I just wasn't sure of how much value I could provide. Uh, the big thing with that was that I was thinking, okay, well, if I do personal courses for you guys, how much value is that really giving to you? And I figured, okay, it's actually not providing that much value because if I wouldn't want to give, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have wanted somebody to, I wouldn't have wanted to pay somebody to give me just one-on-one -on -one advice. That wasn't, I don't think that that would be as helpful. Uh, what I do think would be helpful is teaching the methods and the reasons of why I do things for free. Uh, and I think that's more helpful than me doing paid courses. So that's why I never offered uh, paid courses. Um, that being said, another reason I really couldn't do the course for so long was because uh, I literally just couldn't, like I needed to work. Uh, I just didn't have time. So the only reason I'm, I'm doing this now is because I, A, I wanted to make a second installment because I get emails every single day. And then I also, I've always wanted to do music uh, to some capacity as, as like a career. So, I mean, uh, obviously I don't think I can do that for a while. I'd have to kind of establish myself a little bit more, um, but I am going to be releasing the FLP for this completely free. Um, and I believe, yeah, all the samples I use are, are free. So, uh, you can pick up all of these samples for free as well. And I'll just release this FLP in the description and you could pick that up. Um, if you'd also like, I'm also going to leave, uh, under a comment. I'm just going to have, uh, just my, my YouTube channel. And I'm also going to have, uh, a, like hopefully, uh, some type of website by the time this course is out or some link uh, to like a sample pack, which you could use to, to help me and also help your productions as well. Just improve uh, what you're making. Cause I know it can be hard to find samples out there. It can be hard. Uh, so I'll probably have samples and presets. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do for that uh, by the time this course is out, but I'll have something, something available and then also something for free for you guys. So if you'd like to support me in that way, hopefully I can make you guys more tutorials and I'd love to start making more tutorials on my channel as well. Um. I don't know how much I have to add to this. Uh, I was going to do this in collaboration with another artist and uh, he was going to do vocals. So what I might do is if this tutorial keeps going, then that means that he's collaborating with me. And if he's collaborating with me, then maybe I could do a second part to this tutorial where we have the vocals on top and we try to finish this track together. And in that case, I'll get back to you guys and maybe I'll do a part two and maybe we'll just keep this as a shorter version of the tutorial and just see how it goes. So 
With that being said, thanks so much for your support. I'm glad that these tutorials are helping. And I know that this is a little bit different format and maybe a little less of what you were expecting uh, in terms of the last tutorial I did was a lot more methodical. This didn't really have chapters. It was more of just off the cuff, like, okay, let's make this challenge and then let's explain what I was doing. Uh, so I hope you found that value in this as well. I know it's a bit different, um, but thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you soon. All right, we're here in the actual project after the one hour challenge. And now I'm gonna show you guys uh, what this looks like. So to me, I uh, it was not loading some, some of the things, which is unfortunate, but I'm just gonna play it the way it is and we'll try to go through as much as we can. So a lot of this stuff looks exactly the same as my one hour challenge. Obviously, I absolutely love what he did here. It looks so awesome that he like uh, color coordinated everything. I love that. Uh, props, I thank you, Blender Base. Uh, so this is what we got. And I feel like I can skip a lot of this because it's just the same as one hour challenge. Uh, let's go to the, to the part that he did some stuff with. Obviously, this does not sound very good. I'm not sure why it's not loading some of the plugins right, so it's not going to sound very nice, but... So you can see he actually chopped up uh, both the samples here and just made some interesting uh, rhythmic and pitch patterns uh, to change it up here. The funny thing is, when I first uh, saw him doing this, I'm like, this is kind of hard to follow. And then after, now I'm like completely vibing with it, and it's awesome. And I was wrong again. <laughs> it's all... Uh, then he did this super cool thing where he he sampled and then used uh, the channel pitch of the sample to make this one of the coolest things I've I've heard. I, I don't know. This is so cool to me. That is such a that that is that is swag. That's like the way that that comes into this part. That is so cool. As soon as I heard him do that, I was like, OK, that's sick. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, changing the pitch of and he, he used uh, the song to sample itself and then yeah, it's very, very creative. Um, right here, we have a really cool uh, chord preset. And it's kind of playing with everything else. I really wanted to use a drop and make something with this. Uh, I just never got the, the chance to since the project wasn't working in my favor, unfortunately, but uh, let's go. So he, I like how he also moves down further and further. Uh, so not everything's on the same level. It's kind of interesting. Uh, let's go here, see what he did here. In the front seat, listening to the car beat, and you happy, happy. So we see the way that he did his voice is super interesting. So he actually used his voice as an instrument uh, and the instrument isn't loading for me, but he actually used his voice and then uh, he forgot, uh, I forgot the way that he explained it, but it's so interesting. He actually essentially used it as a sample and then uh, played chords with it uh, uh, under his own voice. This is very <laughs> So you can hear that playing over and over again, that's his voice. And then he has the going. Horizons behind me. Looking at the dashboard. Oh, the chords are working. So yeah, this is his voice. You can hear it. It's like playing his acapella. And that's him saying it always on the run. In the front seat, listening to the car beat. And you happy, happy to horizons behind me. Looking at the dashboard, fast forward, driving. So you can see that we keep the vocals mostly mono and we have uh, different uh, different vocal layers going to a different vocal buses and then EQing those uh, separately is the way that he did it, which is the same way that I do my vocals as well. Uh, and then you can just apply effects to those different um, side pan vocals and the ones that are in the center and obviously the ones that make up the chords so that you can have a, a very cohesive vocal. So it's not just uh, a vocal is almost never just one take. It's usually like uh, 10 different takes and then uh, doing slightly different things with each one of those to complement the whole. So that's usually the way that uh, vocals are done. So you should never expect to just like record vocals into a mic and then just be like good for your song. Like that almost never happens. Uh, I have usually tons of vocal samples and that's how that works. And you happy, happy, me, at the dashboard. I think I accidentally changed some of this AOA. I was like messing around earlier. That's pretty funny. This part is so cool. I love how it like drops out into this giant, opens up into this like reverb area where like it just, uh, Kind of expands the song and then it there's no rhythmic element going on so it's just kind of floaty and then it turns into a build-up which i thought was one of the most creative ways to go from an like an ambient track from hip-hop and then into like a build-up it just shows like uh when you collab with people you're going to come up with ideas that are like greater than the sum of the parts because i know for a fact like when i sent him this track he doesn't make stuff like this so like the stuff that he's going to make out of it is going to be super interesting um 
and just be different. So it's it's really it's really cool and fun to collab. And that's another reason why you should join the Discord. Oh, and then as you can hear that this riser is slowly getting louder and louder. In my opinion, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I think that it, that it probably should have hit here. It just goes for a little bit extra, and I think that it loses a little bit of energy. That's just my thoughts, but overall, still really dope. <laughs> And then he completely made this part. This wasn't me at all. He's just like, I want to make this part. I'm like, all right, go for it. And then he did. It was it was super sick. Uh, and I've never heard him make this type of house music before. Really interesting. We usually make like Future Balance or something. This is this was super cool. Uh, yeah. And then obviously he has the lead uh, playing in the background. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where that lead is. Is it this? No, it's a hi hat. It must be this, right? No, it's not that either. I am not seeing the lead. I might just be blind, but anyways, very cool. Um, I don't have a ton to add. I, as I said, the project didn't totally load for me, so it's uh, a little bit unfortunate. But, um, yeah, this was this is the project. Uh, if you were curious and seeing a little bit like what it looks like, this is what it ended up turning out like. Um, this was going to be actually the whole uh, advanced story. I was going to go over this entire track uh, after the one hour challenge. So I just wanted to do a shorter version of that since this is already getting pretty long with the other uh, version of the course that I did. And I have recorded many versions of this course, but hopefully you liked this version. And without further ado, I hope that you are able to create your own songs out of this and that this was helpful uh, into improving your productions in the future. So without further ado, I'll see you later. And you can, uh, see, if you want to see more of me, I'm going to be making YouTube videos. I'll see you there. Bye. One of the last things I wanted to go over was one of the most advanced techniques I think uh, that I could teach you. And it's so something so funny because a lot of people learn this really early and some people don't learn it for a very long time for some reason. Uh, and it's not really that complicated and some people might laugh and be like oh it's so simple like either why didn't i think of that before or why are you just telling them this now like this is not like an advanced tip but it will help you become an advanced producer and that's simply using reference tracks uh this is so important so i used uh i i can't play this song because it'll get copyrighted but i used this as uh there was an advertising agency that wanted me to make a song similar to this so i uh took the song and I re pretty much remade it and then just changed the melodies and instruments to make my own version of it with kind of the same energy. Uh, so this was the initial track. Uh, I was able to use uh, an AI to split the vocals from the instrumental. And then I had the instrumental in my track and tried to make something really similar. So you guys can listen to this song on your own time and then come back here and listen to what this sounds like. In comparison to the original track. about this is i also made this in like an hour like an hour and a half and i had to make it really quickly because of deadlines and so deadlines are can be a huge motivator for making things really quickly and uh this is just one example of how i had a reference track and how i was able to use that to try to copy and make something similar to that and then do my own take on it so I use the arrangement as inspiration. I use the type of instruments they were using as inspiration. And ultimately, it can help you uh, expand your uh, music production, what is it, like repertoire, because uh, by trying to figure out how other artists did things, it will help you realize things that you've never tried before and uh, open you up to new ways of making things. So for instance, something like this guitar section, I had never made anything like this before, and I thought it sounded really interesting. <laughs> Like 
I do not make guitar patterns usually like this, so this was the inspiration. So I just thought it turned out pretty interesting, so uh, and it really fit the track, so stuff like that. And then I never used to make guitar melodies that kind of went like this. All of it was really interesting and a learning experience for me. And while I don't really make this type of music and I'm not super like impressed by like the final result, I'm like, eh, it's all right. It's like not something I release it or work on really any longer. Um, but I know that it's something that the, uh, that uh, that they were looking for. So this is something that they wanted, not something that I wanted. So I was uh, making it for a different reason there. But uh, yeah, use reference tracks and try to make it as close as you can. Uh, and just kind of, it'll help you fix, uh, learn how to make your mixes better because you'll be listening to professionals and their mixes and how to make your instrumentals. And so that's uh, one huge tip is just using reference tracks and then following and using their arrangement as a uh, inspiration for your own arrangement for your track. Uh, and that can help you and save you so much time because if you don't know how to arrange your music because you're not listening to music that, that other people are listening to, then your music is going to be chaotic and it's going to be hard to follow and yeah, it'll just be difficult. And you might think, oh, I don't want like any limitations. I don't want anything to stump my creativity. It's like your creativity only works if you have limitations first to break. You can't go outside of a box if there is no box. So that's why reference tracks are so helpful because they give you something that you can work off of and be creative with. So hopefully that that was helpful. And I just want to quickly show this. Um, and I don't know how much more I have to show you guys. Uh, I really thought I went over a lot for this advanced tutorial. And I know it's not as comprehensive and maybe some people want it. Um, so maybe I just go a kind of speed through all the tips before we go out. Basically every tip that comes to my mind, I'm just gonna be like a supercharged tip section where I just zoom through a million tips that I can think of. Uh, and then we'll close it out. The last thing that I'd like to say is that I do have a website with my sample pack and I think that this would be super helpful for you guys. And the reason that uh, I'm even offering the sample pack and I think that it'd be useful for, to you guys is because I am updating it um, every time I make some new music or I make uh, something, I'm adding uh, different things that I've made to that sample pack for free. So as you buy it, you can always go back and download the new samples I add. So there's almost no sample packs that do that where you just buy it and there's always new samples for you every time you open it up. That's super cool, I think. So uh, I just want to let you guys know that's Tristan Wilcox dot us with two l's and then i also offer on my patreon i offer personal courses uh one-on-one -on -one, and i give you feedback at different uh tiers you can see that uh, whatever works for you to help support uh support me and then i also make youtube videos for free so uh, you guys can see my productions on my own music and hopefully i can share uh, some knowledge and just help you guys grow in your music producer journey so without further ado we are going to zoom through all the tips starting now so one thing that you can do is if you have sample packs i would go through all your samples and make one consolidated uh, sample pack with all your favorite samples out of different sample packs you use rather than having hundreds of sample packs in your browser. So that's something that I did and this is what I came up with. I had drums, extra sample packs, effects. Uh, yeah, so this got kind of messy pretty quickly, but essentially you'll have all the folders full of things that you have. So I have drums and this says build up loop, claps, fills, drum loops, and then you can see that these come from all sorts of different sample packs that I've downloaded in the past and samples that I've made. And so what this does is effectively consolidates all your sample packs uh, into one sample pack rather than having to go through a million sample packs to find the ones that you want. Uh, so this is, I think, very helpful. Um, another thing that you can do is just save literally everything. Save your projects, save your FOPs, export your FOPs. Name your FOPs and your exported uh, of the FOP the same thing so that if I search for the FOP, I can find the exported file in case that FOP gets corrupted. Save your work. See where you've been. I have not saved a lot of my work and that's why I lost a lot of my work. So just something that I want to know. Uh, so you always want to be saving your stuff. Always want to be making backups of your stuff. Uh, something that you can do is if you have any preset, you can save your presets. Go here, go file, go save as preset and then save that. And then once you save that, name it the same thing. Uh, so whatever I name it here, name that the same thing that you save. It's, it's a mixer chain as well. So whatever the mixer chain is called, you want to save those as the same name. So when you open up both, you can have both of those together. Uh, something cool that you can always mess around with is that if you're in the piano roll, you can always go to this down arrow key, go to view, go to scale highlighting, and you can put it on an automatic and it will help you highlight different uh, parts of the scale that you're looking for. Or you can change it to the scale of the reference track that you're working on, or you can just make it some interesting scale and just mess around with that and see what kind of uh, creative ideas and melodies that helps you come up with. Something I would really recommend uh, is that when you are uh, editing your notes, you want to allow resizing from left to be enabled. This is super annoying when it's off, so I highly recommend that you have that enabled. If you want uh, a window on one of your synths to be open, 
make sure that you on this arrow you click detached and it will stay open as you're working uh and that's really helpful for like if i want to be sound designing this and changing notes i can't do both at the same time unless this window is detached okay so that just means that this changing things here doesn't affect this window uh and then if i want to undetach this you'll see what happens if i change something here it'll disappear that window so that you can fully focus so that's just another thing if you are afraid of making a change in your track and you don't want it to affect uh, your overall production, you can go to file, you can go to save as new version. And what that will do is it will essentially make the, a copy of the FLP as a new version so you can make any changes that you want and still have your old version of the FLP without changing anything there. Um, something that you can do is that if uh, you have some, there's this weird automation glitch that happens, uh, but sometimes you need, uh, you'll have a mixer track uh, that looks like this where um, it just, no matter what you do, it's always stuck at zero. What you wanna to do to fix this is turn this mixture track all the way up, right click it, and then go to initially song with this position. And once you do that, it will reset that one. Uh, if it's still not working, uh, you can always reset the entire uh, preset, by, or reset the entire mixture chain by clicking reset, select track to default. If you want to save and copy effects from one mixture chain to another, what you can do is you can right click and you can go to file, and you can go to save mixture track state as. If you click and hold, and drag you can drag that to any other mixer chain and unlet go on that and it will copy everything about that to the new mixer chain that is so cool to me that you can do that um another thing that you can do is that if you'd like to make a slightly different um uh lead like variant is that like let's say i have a first drop and then i have a second drop and i want to make a different lead but it still fits in my track i can actually just right click on this and click clone and it will duplicate uh, that preset. And then I can make slight differences in that preset so that I have two different uh, things that are but both similar in style, if that makes sense. So hopefully that was too complicated. Um, what's another thing? Uh, let's think. I'm, I'm running out of steam. I, I was like, I was on a roll with it, with, it, with those tips. Let's see if I can uh, think of any more. Um, if you have uh, this uh, magnet on, on different things, it can really screw you up. So I have mine on cell and that's what it's selected on. So when I move things around, it always clicks to the nearest cell. If I had this on none, it would just slide kind of all around and be very unpredictable. So I have it on cell. That way when I click it, um, it properly uh, aligns to the grid the way you would imagine it would. Um, something that you can do is that if I left click and hold alt, I can... I can, uh, I can uh, play patterns in the track. And then you can also do this on a different level inside the piano roll without playing through the entire thing. So if you just want to hear what this chord sounds like at the end without having to play the whole pattern over again, alt, right click. And you can drag through to see what that sounds like. Um, one thing, uh, another tip that I have, which I shared in the very beginning of the course is any knob that you see in a third party plugin or in a normal plugin, you can click and you can automate. If you go here and I change something, I can go to what I changed up here, right click it and go create automation clip. And it will literally create an automation clip for whenever I just moved last. Um, as you can see that create an automation clip for that five band frequency. And that's how you can make automations for literally anything that you change in the entire, uh, in the entire uh, program. Um, other things that I can recommend uh, in the sampler, uh, if you want to uh, play it like an instrument, uh, you can't just do it by dragging and dropping the sample in here. What you'd actually have to do is go to your channel rack, open up something called the sampler here. And once you open up that sampler and drag and drop a sample onto that, let's say, actually, I need actually like a one shot and then I need to be like a synth. And then I'll drop that sample into the sample. And that will give you the envelope tool, which you can use to, to change the envelope of your sound. And then I use the crossfade and this will allow you to sustain whatever instrument that you're playing over time. So if I put the crossfade all the way up, you can hear it's like still playing a little bit, which is really cool. Um, another thing that you can do is that if you want it to slide, you can go to this wrench tool, click mono, click up, and then uh, max, and then you can do one, is what I like to do. And then you can have it uh, bending like crazy, like I showed you in the beginning of the sound design course. So that's how you do that in the sampler. Um, something that you can do is if this range for pitch isn't enough, you can just increase the range to 12. Uh, that'll make it go an up, octave up or an octave down, and then you can uh, automate the pitch of that accordingly, because you cannot, as far as I know, uh, automate this pitch right here. 
So that's just a quick tip right there. Also, did you know that the volume here and the volume in here and the channel rack are exactly the same? So you can see this thing changing with this. Those are the same thing, FYI. Um, trying to think of anything else that I can think of. If you take hold on the sample, you can also drag and then drop it in the in the uh, playlist as well. So those are kind of, they work together as well in that way. Um, I, if I have a pattern that has multiple things going on in it, I can split it. So like, let's say I have this, chord progression and it is in this melody here and I go like here and I paste those chords and I have these kind of on top of each other I can go to this pattern I can right click the pattern and click split by channel and then it will pull out that and then give me the guitar and that chord separately in two different patterns so you can use that for arranging um, and doing that um, another cool thing that you can do is in the top left corner of this it gives you tons of settings for the sampler uh, for samples and for uh, your uh, patterns so for instance I can click chop and I can go a uh, different thing. So I can do like beat shuffle and it will like completely change the way this goes. And that completely changed the melody because it chopped it up. And the same thing happens uh, with loop based samples too. So if I go to loops and I go to like, actually, let me just uh, show you guys an example by literally muting everything except for this and then going to my own sample pack. And this will just be a little plug because I'll show you one of uh, the cooler samples in my pack. So we'll go to loops and I'll go to other. You can't tell me this doesn't sound sick. <laughs> it's so funny, like I like I make stuff like this, and then like you guys see me like when I'm working and trying to show you guys how to music produce, and I like make like the most garbage stuff. But then like when I'm alone, like sitting, it's like raining outside. I'm like making like music like this is so funny. It just depends on like the mood I'm in and like different things to be. It can highly affect the way. Also, how much water you drink and uh, what snacks you have with you will affect different types of music that you're making. Cool facts. Okay, so uh, top left corner here, I can go to here, and there's all uh, types of settings. Like if I want to make another sample, that's um, high pitch and the other one low pitched, but I want them to play at the same time. I could go to click this, make unique a sample, and this uh, will not affect what I changed here, will not affect this, so I can have them playing at the same time. And then I could select both of them at the same time, and I could actually make changes to both of them simultaneously. So then I could uh, have, um, ch I could chop it both the same way, and then I could like do something like this. And that, for some reason, sounds very cool. So I might use that in some type of track someday. But uh, yeah, you could use that, that chop function. And that was just one of the functions here. There's so many different ones that you can do. And I haven't even messed with all of them. So apparently, you can extract stems from the sample. Uh, I haven't even tried this yet. Uh, it's with the new FL Studio 21 update. Uh, they just did. I forgot which one. But if you up, I can extract stems. Uh, this feature needs to be downloaded before it can be used. Download now? Sure. Let's do that. Uh, that's so cool i've never used this before so like I, I, it's just exciting like when you're just messing around you're just looking at different things and you can find all sorts of new stuff in fl studio constantly things that new that they're adding so just going to download this really quick and see what it does so this is just the advanced production process just randomly seeing what happens when you click things uh and then not being afraid to see what happens so let's do uh there's no vocals so i can just pull that out and let's extract let's see what it does i'm really curious Processing, processing. I'm so curious if it's going to get all my samples out of this. That would blow me away. So does this just poop them out? Oh my goodness, it does. How cool is that? And this is the bass. That is so... You can't tell me that's not cool. That is really cool. Like, they just added this too. Okay, that's another advanced production technique, extracting your your own from things from samples. How cool is that? Wow, that is really cool. I honestly, I don't even think that I could show you a cooler, a cooler thing. Let's end it off. Like that, I know FL Studio just added that. I saw that and I hadn't used it until then. That is so cool. Okay, I think that's a great place to end it. I've gone over a lot of stuff and I haven't even gone over maybe like 5% of everything in this program. It's insane. Like if I was literally to do an advanced tutorial front to back, all everything, I could be here for like a year. Like it's, there's so much to do.
Oh, it's so frustrating. Like, I just want to show you guys everything. I want to, I want to help you guys. And I know that I can't do it all in one tutorial. And that's why I want to, for the last time, say I am making videos on my YouTube channel now, uh, cause a lot of people have been asking me to, and I'm going to help you guys. We're going to do challenges. I'm going to do like, uh, so we'll all kinds of really neat challenges, uh, in my discord community as well that, um, I'm hoping will add more fun. And so you can find people to make music with. So if you don't have any friends to make music with, uh, come join my discord uh, community and we're all going to make music together. I'm going to do challenges. I'll be there too. It's not going to be one of those things where I just won't be there. I will be there and I'll help you. And if you're, if you want to join me, uh, making music, then just, yeah, jo join the channel, join this stuff. And I just want to thank, uh, free code camp for this opportunity again. And I absolutely love their channel and they helped me so much when I was in college as well. So I want to return the favor by helping them, uh, by making a, a tutorial that could help everyone else. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining. And I hope that you gathered at least a little bit of information and remember, enjoy the process and have fun producing. Peace.